<coughs> Have a seat in there and put your shoes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There we go. Oh, you do have socks on under that. Good. Am I going to be able to keep these things? Oh yeah, they're going to go with you. They'll follow you. Like You're in here with me for a bit. We've got some things to talk about. So you put your shoes on, get comfortable. Probably keep your feet warmer. I can't go over that cell. What's that? I can't go over those cells. No? Can you believe me? They're not, uh... <laughs> I can't go believe it. I tell you. Here's your food. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. There's, um, you said cream with your coffee. Yeah. You can add it. I didn't know if you wanted yeah. one or two. Help yourself. A couple of housekeeping details. You eat, do your thing, okay? There's a couple of things I want to explain to you so you understand. Um, everything you and I do, Everything we say in this room, back in this cell block area, is all recorded. Huh? Okay. You mean as a, a tape recorder from where? Yep. It's all being recorded, video and audio. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can hear us and see us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to notice, Sandy, with me today, like I don't sit and I don't write things down. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, well, the way policing is now, you record everything. And it's for your protection. It's also for my protection. Okay? Nobody can ever say down the road, Andy said this when he didn't, or Scott said this when he didn't. You know, we, we live in a world now where it's like, no, we can just press play, mm -hmm. and you can listen to what I said, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that that's happening, okay? And, mm -hmm. and just, you know, I'm sure you're not surprised by that. If you, um, if you go anywhere these days, drive to a bank, drive to a coffee shop, drive to a grocery store, they're taking our picture. Mm -hmm. it's, that's the world we live in, okay? Well, that's no different than law enforcement. That's how we do things now. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. I'm just going to turn this fan on this heater down a little bit. Are you warm enough? I'm okay. Okay. I'm going to turn it off for now a little bit. If you aren't warm enough, you let me know and I'll turn it back on, okay? Did you have breakfast this morning? Mm -hmm. What time did you eat? I don't eat a lot. I'm not a big eater. Just kind of small meals throughout I the day? Had, uh, <clears throat> well, that's what I'm supposed to do because I'm diabetic, but I don't do it because I can't be bothered washing up. This is all the old deal. Gotcha. Oh, okay. But you got to eat if you're diabetic. You've got special dietary restrictions? No. Um, I had... Um, some cereal and banana and an English muffin for my breakfast. Good. Okay. Well, that's good. And a pot of tea. I like tea. You like tea? I drink a lot of tea. Yeah. Okay. And obviously coffee too. Or are you just every once in a while? I drink tea at mm -hmm. breakfast and lunch. I drink mm -hmm. coffee after my supplement. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, I hope you don't mind. I got one for myself, too, so I could join you. I didn't need any food, but if you're going to have a coffee, I thought I'll take advantage. I just got here myself, so as we settle into this process, um, I'll have a coffee with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you understand you're at the Peterborough Police Service? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any confusion as to where you are right now? No, no, no. Okay. Do you know what day it is? Saturday. Do you know what the date is? What? Do you know what the date is? Uh, maybe around the 20th or 21st, I'm not sure. You're close. When uh, when you retired, you know, days are all the same. They just kind of blend. 
Yeah. The, the whole time is just to one continuum. Yeah. Saturday is no different for me than Sunday or Monday or Tuesday. They're all the same. But it's not like that. When you work, it's not like that. Yeah, you know, you're, yeah. you're aware of every day and, yeah. and the weekends. And, but when you're retired, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, I got to keep track of dates and times and all that stuff. Today, you were close. Today's the twenty-second. Twenty-second. Twenty-second of November. Okay. I keep track of the date on my calendar. Yep. At home, but they took it away. So now I, I've lost all the. People's birthdays and anniversaries and everything else. Everything was in that calendar? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, as we and I go through this process, Andy, there's no doubt you're going to have some questions for me. You feel free to ask me anything you want. Okay? If I can answer it, I will. And if I can't, I'll explain to you why. Okay? Okay. Can we start with this? Sure. It's my understanding that the police are legally obliged to give me a list of the stuff that they take from my home and from my car. And I have asked several policemen for this list and none of them will give me a list. So you want to know specifically what was taken I, from I your home? I want to know exactly what they took from my home and what they took from my car. Okay. Well, you don't even have... Maybe I'm wrong. You though. don't even have your car back yet, do you? No. No. Okay. So maybe you can explain to me how it takes over a week to sell to a little car. Well, yeah, you know what? And I, I when you're done eating and, and I'll let you finish, I will definitely answer that question for you. No issue. I got no problem answering that for you. When the house and the car were being sold, yep. when the search warrants had expired. No, they hadn't been. Anyway. No, no, and, and I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not going to argue with because I really don't. But I can show you how, how come they're not expired. I don't mind explaining that to you, because that's a logical question that people sometimes confuse. It's not important to me. I don't care how long they stay there. No. But I just want you to understand that the search warrants hadn't expired. Okay. What happens with a search warrant, so you understand, is that, and I have a copy of them here that I can show you, because that would probably familiarize yourself with them. But see, what happens with a search warrant is there's a date and a time put on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, But the date and the time is what we call the execution date and time, which means that the reader, the judge or justice, has authorized the police, yep, you can go search that car, or yes, you can go search that house. You have to execute that warrant on this date between these time frames. So maybe it would be like the 14th of November between 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night. That's when you have to execute this warrant. Once the police have executed that warrant within that time frame, there is no time limit at that point in time. Like They don't have to be out by 8 o'clock at night. It just means they have to have executed that warrant to show the judge or justice that yeah, we've entered the premise and we've executed it at that time. Because sometimes, and I'm not talking about this investigation, I'm talking about others that I've worked on, you could be at a scene or have an item for a long time. But what you're reading on the face of the warrant that you would have is what we refer to as the execution time. Mm -hmm. So may maybe that's what you were looking at. And I can, sh when, you know, I, it's not a, it's not like argument or debatable. It's a good question, and that's what that's no, how it works. It's, it's not important to me, really. Okay. Well, you brought it up. It's a but good the question. List, the list is important. If, I'll get you a list. It is a fact that they're supposed to give me a list. Maybe they're not. Maybe I just have it wrong. I don't have a problem getting you a list of what was taken. It's not a secret. It's your house. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you probably noticed are missing. Maybe others you didn't, but I don't have a problem with it. At the end of the day, it's your material. It's your information. You have a right to know what it is. I was going to give you a friendly word of advice. What's that? If you're ever going to go to a house to ask somebody to speak to you, you know, so you can ask them questions. Yeah. Don't do it after they've been searched. Because that person will be so pissed off, they will, they will not talk to you, no matter what. Well, you want to know something, Andy? Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why we're here now, and Peterborough's out. 
You should see the mess of my house. Did they not leave it in good shape? It's stuff broken, it's stuff damaged, stuff scattered all over the place. Okay. I, I agree with you, Andy. I talk to people all the time, and you know what? Yeah, like if I, if I go to anybody and say, here's a search warrant, I'm going to search your car, and I do that, and then the next day I show up saying, hey, would you like to come in and talk to me? You're probably going to be annoyed with me. You're not going to be a happy guy. Depends the condition you left my car or my house in. Well, you don't have your car back, but you do have your house, and, and obviously you're saying your house wasn't left in great shape. My house is a disgrace. Okay. Not just bad shape, it's a disgrace. What, what did they do? They just turned around and put the phone on the floor. Okay. Okay, I'll, we'll deal with that. All the beds apart and the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, and that's not supposed to happen. You're, 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 there's a way to search. There's a way to do it properly. Absolutely. And I don't know why, but they seem to want to open the windows. And as a result, the kitchen window, the handle's broken off in there, and I, I wanted to try and get it closed. But you can't close it? Because it's letting the, the cold air in. Okay. And I'll put up my cash bill. Yep. But they don't care about any of that stuff. We'll get that resolved. The police are alone to themselves. They do whatever the hell they want. And they will not answer your questions. It doesn't matter what you ask them. Well, I told you today I'll answer your questions, so there you go. Well, these are messy things to eat, aren't they? They're good, but they're messy. I never leave them this normal. Well, <laughs> those are the things that you don't eat when you're driving somewhere because they go all over the place. You can't keep track of it while you're driving, right? It's not good snacking food that way. If you need more, you could use those booty things if you want to wipe oh, your hands, okay. too. That's okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I can get you a list. I got no issue with that. Um, I'll answer your questions about why searches take the length of time that they do. Absolutely. What other questions you got for me? That's all really. I couldn't see why it took so long. And I couldn't see why I can't get a list. You'll get a list. I don't even know why they arrested me. You can explain all that to you. Because, You'll know clearly. Because I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. You could let me stay at home where at least I'd be comfortable and I wouldn't be causing you any trouble or expense. And any time you want me, you just come and get me. I'd be right there, shouldn't we? Right. But that's what happened today. They came and got you. Right? See, there's yeah. a process we have to follow. Mm -hmm. So the way it works when you ask about arrest and things like that, and I don't, I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you, you understand that you're under arrest. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did the officers tell you that you're under arrest for when they went and arrested you today? Murder in the first degree and criminal harassment. Her, okay. Exactly. And that's my understanding too, right? So you, you know that you're under arrest for murder in the first degree and criminal harassment. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're talking right now about the, the disappearance and murder of Lise for dead. Yeah. Okay. I don't need you to say anything other than just it's been explained to you that she's the person who's missing. You're aware of this through the course of this mm -hmm. investigation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and this is the way we look at it from the OPP perspective. Okay, Andy. Um, I'll get into it in a little bit more detail in a second here, but she, she's, you're under arrest for that. They told you that today. They also, when they arrested you, they would have told you your rights. They would have read your mm -hmm. rights to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And I, it's my understanding as well that you also spoke to a lawyer today. Yeah. I don't want to know what you and the lawyer talked about. I just, you did speak to a lawyer. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you satisfied with the advice you received from that lawyer? You don't need to tell me what that person told you. I'm just asking yeah, you. Yeah, I'm satisfied. Okay. And, and you understood what they told you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, 
you want to, you know, these are serious allegations because the allegations are murder in the first, murder in the first degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other than treason to the queen, it doesn't get much higher than that in the criminal code when we talk about offenses mm -hmm. against another person. Okay, that's an arrestable offense, and we as officers have an obligation when it comes to certain types of offenses, okay, where we don't have discretion to just leave somebody at home, come and deal with them when we need to. Mm -hmm. We need to arrest, process that individual, and then put them before the courts. Mm -hmm. And it's the courts that then decide on continued detention or whether or not they get released back into the community while these allegations are resolved. Does that make sense so mm -hmm. far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why you were arrested. That's why we can't just leave you at home. Okay. I'm not suggesting for one moment that you're planning on going anywhere or that you <laughs> want to cause problems to anybody, mm -hmm. but that's the way the law is written and that's the way the law works. Okay. So what will happen from this process on is that you will eventually end up before the courts. Okay. They will decide whether or not you continue to stay in jail or whether or not you get released back into the community while these allegations move forward to the courts. Make sense so far? Have you any idea when this will happen? It'll start tomorrow. Oh. Okay, the process will start tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow's a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that you'll be remanded into custody tomorrow. So what that means is you will appear before a justice of the peace, probably on a video camera. Mm -hmm. You'll be remanded into custody. And then next week, I don't know exactly what day, but probably Monday, Tuesday, it'll be early, you will actually appear in court. Okay? And your lawyer will be there. The Crown Prosecution will be there. And they will, you know, your lawyer will instruct you in the courts as to what your wishes are. And they will decide, in the courts I'm referring to they will decide whether or not you get out or you continue to stay in jail. I'm going to tell you right now, Andy, just so you just so you know, these are murder allegations. These are extremely serious. Um, in my experience, the likelihood that you'll be released is very slim. I'm just being honest with you. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's just the way it is. So if I'm not released, you will be coming back here? No. You'll go to the jail. In Lindsay? I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Because um, I'm not from here, so if Lindsay is the closest jail to here, then I guess that's where you would go. I can find that out. But I'm going to be here at least for two or three days. No, you will be here today. You will probably be here tonight. You'll be gone by tomorrow. I would think. Oh. Okay? Okay. Okay, I'm just, that's as straight up an answer as I can give you. So if I'm going tomorrow, I'll be going to the jail in Lindsay, is that what you mean? Yes. I will confirm that for you in case there's a different jail around here that they would take to, take you to, but it, it's quite conceivable it's the jail in Lindsay. That would make sense. Yeah. Okay. In, regardless of where they take you, it's, it, it's an institution that they would take you and hold you until you go to court. Okay? Like I say, I'm not from here. It's different everywhere I go in the province. But I can certainly, before we're done here today, find out which jail you would go to. Okay? So those are the allegations. That's what you're here for. You understand that. Mm -hmm. I think we've clearly established the fact that they're very, very serious. Mm -hmm. You would agree with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I just want to cover off a couple things with you because I met you a little while ago back in the cells when we talked. That's mm -hmm. the first time I've ever met you. Um, you understand that you're under arrest. I know that you've spoken to a lawyer, okay? But I just want to make sure you clearly understand your rights, okay? So you understand that you're being charged with murder in the first degree, mm -hmm. okay, and criminal harassment. These are with respect to the allegations against uh, lease for debt, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more in a minute, okay? I want you to understand that you know that you have the right to speak to a lawyer, okay? I know you've already spoken to a lawyer, so we have two options in this country. We have what we call 
uh, Legal Aid or Duty Council, which is my understanding that that's who you spoke to, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a 1-800 toll-free number that puts you in touch with them. They're able to provide you with free legal advice rights 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay? And uh, if that's, you know, a person you want to speak to to seek out legal advice, like you did, that's an option that's available to you, okay? Mm -hmm. In this country, we also have something known as what we call council of choice. What that means is people are free to choose any lawyer they want. It doesn't have to be a free legal aid duty council lawyer, okay? And, and you, you have that right as well. We all have those rights. Yeah. So you have that right as well, where you can also pick out your own lawyer. We call that council of choice, okay? So whether you know your own lawyer, or have your own lawyer, or you want to choose your own lawyer, that's entirely up to you. Do you understand these rights? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to speak to a lawyer? I know you've already spoken to Legal Aid Duty Council. I'm just well, asking. Well, that, that lawyer I spoke to said there would be a lawyer here tomorrow. Okay. That, that I don't know. That's got nothing to do with me. I don't, lawyers don't come to the police stations. I'll tell you that right now. That's as honest as I can be with you. Maybe maybe what they were telling you is that the lawyer will be at the court, yeah, not at the police station. That's, well, that's what I mean. The lawyer, okay. He said there would be a lawyer in attendance when I was being... Yes, that's at the court. I just want to be very clear with you on that, that that's at the court setting. Mm. There won't be a lawyer here mm. at the police station. Okay? I just want to be clear on that, okay? For, so are you, do you understand what your rights are? What I explained to you about yeah, the lawyers? Yeah, I think so. You're satisfied you had an opportunity to speak to the lawyer you wanted to? Is there anybody else you want to talk to? No. Okay. The other thing I want to explain to you is, and I know you've already had this explained to you, but um, you know, you're under no obligation to speak to me here today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to feel obliged. I don't want you to feel compelled to say anything to me here today unless you want to. Okay, mm -hmm. But just remember, whatever we do talk about is being recorded mm -hmm. and could be used as evidence in court. Okay. The other thing is, I know that you've spoken to other police officers <laughs> in relation to this investigation before you've met me here today. Is mm -hmm. that accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay. As a result of that, okay, this is very important, I don't want you to feel compelled. I don't want you to feel obliged in any way. Okay that you have to repeat anything to me here today that you may have already told another police officer, okay? Mm -hmm. You're under no obligation, you're not obliged, you're not compelled in any way to repeat any of your previous conversations with any other officers to me here today, okay? But again, just remember that whatever we do talk about could be used in evidence, mm -hmm. okay? Who, who ultimately decides whether something can be used in evidence in court or not? Do you know? I guess the judge. Absolutely. And you know what? I ask that question of everybody because I want people to have an understanding that it's not up to me. It's not up to lawyers. It's up to the judge. Mm -hmm. And a judge ultimately decides if something is allowed to be used in court. And that's why I always use the word allowed because just because people talk to me doesn't mean it's allowed to be in court. The ultimate decision rests with the judge. Mm -hmm. Make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the judge may not... Think about that if the defense attorney doesn't pose an objection. Well, here's the thing about defense attorneys. They have to listen to you because they represent you. They yeah, work yeah, for you. But they may not be bright enough to know when to object. Well, then if you're bright enough, you tell them when and to the object. Judge, the judge may be asleep. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but you have to understand, as this process unfolds, Andy, Defense lawyers work for you. It's your job to make sure that they're doing what you want them to do. They are there to provide you with good advice, sound advice. They are your legal barometer. However, you're allowed to make up your own mind. Mm -hmm. You're a smart man, so if you don't think they're doing something that you want them to do, then you need to tell them that. Okay, that's that's you know down the road where you down you know that's a process down the road, but don't ever forget that that they're there for you. They work for you. Okay, 
And they're there to guide you. Lawyers are very smart people. So are judges. Have to remember, judges were once lawyers. Mm -hmm. Right? But by and large, you know, they have to remember that they're representing you. They have your best interest at heart. But they have to listen to you as well because they're there to represent you. Period. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any confusion about anything that I've explained to you here so far? No. Any questions on any of that? The only question I have is why it took over a week to sell my house and over a week to sell my car. That does not make any sense at all to me. Okay. Um, I will answer your question. Okay. And why I'm why I didn't get a list of things taken. Okay. Well, the list of things, um, you know, there's no obligation on the police to hand you something like that. That comes out through what's known as court disclosure. So when the police put together their crown brief and present it to the courts to say, here's the allegations and this is why we think this person committed this offense, that's called disclosure. And disclosure comes to you and your lawyer. And in that disclosure will then be a list of everything that was taken, everything that was seized. So there's no obligation on the police to hand you a list ahead of time. I was told that there was. Okay. If I can ask, who told you that? But one of the policemen I was speaking to. Okay. Well, here's the thing, Eddie. I personally don't have a problem getting you a list because there's no issue with it. You're gonna, you, it's your house. You should already know what's missing. And if there's certain things that you're not sure, we'll you tell you. You should see the mess. I couldn't tell you what's missing or what's not missing. Okay. Everything's just a mess. Andy, I'll get you a list. <laughs> That's how insignificant it is to me. I'll get you a list. There's no secrets here because you know what? It's your property. It's things that belong to you. Why would I not tell you? So I don't have a problem with that. Why does it take so long to do your car? Well, here's the thing. We still have your car. Okay. Forensic examinations, which is what's happening with your car, take time. And here's the reason why it takes time. This is one investigation that's happening in the entire province. Mm -hmm. On any given time, unfortunately, there are many serious investigations that are happening all over this province every day. When people seize things that they want to have forensically examined, Traditionally, all of our exhibits go to what we refer to as the Center of Forensic Sciences. You've heard of that place? Is that in London? No, it's in Toronto. There's one in Toronto and there's also one in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the biggest one is in Toronto. Okay? That's traditionally where police, law enforcement send their exhibits for forensic examinations. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are busy. Period. So what happens is, and I know this doesn't sound fair, and it, but what happens is we are one case at this day, at this time, that sends down a car and says we want to have it forensically examined. They have cars lined up, they have exhibits lined up, they have everything lined up, and they have to prioritize them and get to them when they can. So are you saying my car was taken to Toronto? Uh, I believe that's where your car went to, yeah. You're kidding. No. We didn't drive it. Don't worry, nobody drove your car to Toronto. We tow it, put it in a nice big enclosed truck and take it down, protect it, but that's where the, the scientific work has to happen. The scientists then go through the car. And here's the thing, once they start looking at your car, it takes a long time sometimes. Because it's not just walk into room. We're talking about you know special scientific procedures that mm -hmm. have to take place, that things that aren't visible to the naked eye special uh, procedures that take place to, to make exhibits become visible, to be revealed, then further processes to, to, to uh, you know, work up those exhibits to figure out what they are. We're, hey, we're looking for everything from hair and fibers to DNA, everything, right? That takes time. You figure the size of a, the inside of a car, the size of the outside of a car. We, you know what, we will look for exhibits, we will look for things as small as that little piece of lettuce and sesame mm -hmm. seed on the table. And we will work up a DNA profile from that. Okay, And you think of the size of that and put that in context with the entire vehicle, mm -hmm. that's why it takes a long time to go through your vehicle. So you don't know at the moment what stage in the process my car is in? I know they've started to look at it. I know they're not done. 
Have you any idea when they will be? Of when the car will come back? No. I don't today, no. As I sit here today, I don't know when that car will be done. Okay. But when it's done, when the police no longer need it, and it's no longer uh, of any evidentiary value, like we no longer need to hold on to mm -hmm. it to process it, it will be returned. And it will be returned in the same condition with which it was taken. And if you have a problem with that, and there's something different about that, then you call me. Does that sound fair? Mm-hmm. I still think you could let me go home where I would at least be comfortable. I'm not going to go, go anywhere or do anything bad or anything like that. Andy, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I'm a very, very simple person. I lead a very simple life. I live alone. I have no TV, no computer, no telephone, none of that stuff. I just have books. I read constantly. What do you read? Everything. Mostly true stories, rather than fiction. I don't read much fiction. I like true stories in like sports movies and sports books and like mm -hmm. uh, things like that. What's your passion? What do you like? When you talk about, you say like true stories. What do you like? I've got autobiographies from Margaret Thatcher, Michael Caine, the movie star. Yeah. Um, uh, a guy. I forget his name, he was a spy in Britain and he was caught, George, George something, he was a spy in Britain yeah. and he got caught and he got sentenced to 42 years I think it was, yeah. in Wormwood Scrubs, which was a big prison in London which was considered to be impregnable yeah. and after a few years he escaped from it. And he tells you in his book, he tells you, well, I'll tell you about his childhood and growing up and the whole business, you know. Yeah. And how he escaped and how he got away from Britain and managed to get to Germany and Berlin. And from then, the communists who they were spying for took him to Moscow and he lived in Moscow since then. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very, yeah. So, no, no, no TV, no internet, no telephone, that's obviously by choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a smart man, so mm -hmm. why, why did you make that choice that you don't want those things? I find these things are dangerous. Okay. Not so long ago, I, had a, I read a case of a woman who actually lost her house. And apparently these crooks got a hold of the data from her credit card. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know how they did this, but they were able to transfer ownership of the house from the lady's name to their name and they sold it. Right. And then eventually it came out that this had happened. Right. And the police, I think the police found the, the guys who did this one. But it cost that woman thousands and thousands of dollars in legal expenses to try and get her house back. Yeah. And that's just one of thousands of frauds that are committed every day yep. with credit cards and computers. Absolutely, I agree. So if you don't want to be caught up in something like that, just don't have a computer or credit card. Uh, you know what? It's not a bad way to look at it. Like, How can anybody argue with that? Well, people say to me, how can you live without a telephone? You know? And I say to them, how do you think people lived before the telephone was invented? They led perfectly productive lives and had perfectly normal lives. Well, I look at it this way as well. I have uh, three daughters, right? Now, yeah, you're older than me, but I grew up, when I, when I was growing up in my generation, there were no cell phones, there were no computers, there was no internet. Um, we had black and white television. Mm -hmm. We didn't have remote controls, right? Um, my, you know, if somebody needed to get a hold of me, 
they knew where I was, and hopefully they either called the school or whatever. But if I needed to get a hold of them, ten cents got you a payphone, mm -hmm. and you made a phone call. Mm -hmm. I fast forward now to this generation that we're in, and there's kids now that how, they 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 seem to think they can't survive without a computer, without a cell phone. Mm -hmm. How do they stay in touch with everybody? Socially, I find kids now, my own included, are socially inept mm -hmm. <laughs> because they don't talk on the phone anymore. They text and write one another through emails. They don't write letters. They don't talk on the phone. And when I do force my girls to talk on the phone to their friends, they sound socially awkward. Mm -hmm. they, they can't carry a conversation. It's actually funny to listen to it. So you're not wrong in your thinking. <laughs> um, it's just the way the world has gone. Because there's also a lot of good things that comes out of the technology, too. Yeah. What it is is cultural change. Absolutely. Gradual cultural change, which presumably will keep going. But um, it scares me. It scares the hell out of me. But you're I, 76. When I see what they can do nowadays, they yeah. can do almost anything they want with a computer. Yeah, almost, it's pretty incredible. Almost anything. It's pretty incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, when you think about it, you're 76 years old. You've survived this long without those things. Mm -hmm. Really, you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. So what does it really matter what other people think? I don't care what other people think. Exactly, right? So, you know, you're good to go. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's, you're right, that's, you know, that's, but that's your choice. That's the way you've chosen to live. Yeah. So obviously you're a big reader. Well, the reason I don't have these things is certainly not because I can't afford them. Or I wanted to make it happen. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that. It's, it's your choice. The reason I don't have TV, I think it, that's one of the biggest disappointments in my life is the way TV went. Because when it was in, came out at first, I thought, this is a great thing. We're going to be able to get all sorts of educational programs going. Programs of more nature and all, all sorts of wonderful things we'll be able to get. And what do we get? The price is right. Let's make a deal. Match game. A whole bunch of absolute garbage. Yeah. 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 And those shows are still on. I know. Dancing with the stars. <laughs> I, I know. It seems to me that they're catering to the lowest common denominator. People, well, you know this, they wouldn't do it and the shows wouldn't be on if there wasn't a following. No, absolutely. Because there's a following, mm -hmm. the shows continue. Ratings rule TV. Exactly, right? Yep. So. If, if everybody stopped watching it and wasn't interested, the show would end. But you're right, the game shows keep coming because there are people who sit and just take them in hour after hour. Yeah. Right? I mean... I still think it's sad. Okay. Very sad. Yeah, you know what, I, I'm not gonna... I mean, I certainly can't argue with that. And I will tell you in my 25 years on this job and the experience I have of talking to people, maybe on one hand I can count the number of people such as you that have kind of gone off the grid when it comes to certain pieces of technology and, and have stood by it. You know, you read, you do your things. Um, the majority of people that I talk to are addicted to technology. They're, they're part of it. They're, they're, they're right involved. Yeah. Very, very few are, are like yourself. You, you guys are a rare breed nowadays. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's your choice, right? And like you say, yeah. your attitude is you don't care, so good for you. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all good. Now, I know you worked with the MNR. Mm -hmm. You worked as a clerk. What does that mean? What did you do? Well, at different times I did different things. You know, they shipped you around sometimes from thing to thing. Right. Uh, one time I worked for some time with the licensing section. You know, uh, fishing and hunting uh, licenses? Yep. Yeah. And other times I did other things like they have uh, 
Crown land, yeah. which they rent out to people yes. under various different schemes. And uh, these people are supposed to pay rent for this land that they're renting. Yeah. And that sort of thing. You, like, you were in charge of renting it to people, or what was your role? No, I was in charge of uh, the accounts, s s seeing that they paid for them, paid the rent and stuff like that. There's also another thing that they have in Ontario, it's uh, water power. Water power? Yeah, if you want to set up a little electricity generating station on a river or something, right. you have to apply to the Ontario government to get permission to do it. And if you get permission, then you have to pay for using the water. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All right. And that's what they call water power. And you, you were like in charge of those accounts too? Yeah. Okay. Now where did you spend your career working out of? Like what office? Queen's Park. Queen's Park. You were in Toronto? Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Now you retired quite a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, whole career Queen's Park? Oh no, no. When I came over here first from Scotland, I had an awful time trying to find a job. Because everywhere I went, they said to me, do you have Canadian experience? And I said, no, I don't have any Canadian experience. And they said, oh, well, we can't hire you if you've no Canadian experience. So that went on for a long time. And I got so fed up, I decided, to just take any job at all I could get, just to earn some money. So uh, I did a few jobs, <laughs> weren't very nice, <laughs> but but they got me some Canadian experience. What did you do? I worked in this place called Thermofresh. It was a company that made coffee. And they put this coffee into machine vending machines all over Toronto. Okay. Uh, and they sold other stuff like snacks and stuff like that. You know, machines, vending machines that would spit out a cookie monster or something like this. Right. Different stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they sold pop machines, pop machines. Yeah. Um, that was not a nice job. Anyway, another job I had was driving a truck for a laundry company. During the time I worked there, the name of the company changed several times. Uh, but it was a big, long-established company. Yeah. I don't know why they kept changing names, but they did. Maybe it's some kind of tax dodge, do tax dodge or something. I don't know. No, it's possible. Right? Yeah. Anyway, in the Ontario government, they have two types of employees. One are called classified employees, and these are regular employees. And they have unclassified employees, and these are hired on a contract. And theoretically, the maximum length of the contract is nine months. But sometimes they manage to get around this. Anyway, I decided if I wanted to get a decent job, to uh, take any job at all I could get with the Ontario government. And uh, I was able to get a job as a mailboy with uh, tourism, Ministry of Tourism. Okay. But, of course, it was an unclassified job. Anyway, I stuck at that for a while. And once you're, once you're in the Ontario government, you have access to this newspaper that comes round every week posting all the jobs that are available. So, uh, using that paper, I was able to apply for classified jobs which I did, and I eventually got a classified job with the Ministry of Health. Oh, okay. At OHIP. 
Yeah. On Overlee Boulevard? Do you know Overlee Boulevard? Do you know Toronto? I know, yeah, I, I'm in Toronto quite often, yeah. Yeah, Overlee Boulevard. Okay. I, I don't know that I've ever been on Overlee Boulevard. What part of the city is that? Oh, God, East, East West, like it's all called Toronto now, but way back in the day just, it was Scarborough just, just, and Milton. Just, and just a little bit east. It's uh, Overlee Boulevard is famous for a huge mall on one side and Coca Cola on the other side, back to me. Okay. This whole area, which is sort of elevated, you know, the Don Valley Parkways down there, and yes. this, it used to be a racetrack. Okay. They had a big race time there. I yep. can't remember what it was called. It's not Scarborough Downs. I don't think so. Because it's Don Valley Parkway. You're on the, You're getting into the east side of the city. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, okay. just to the east. Not a lot to the east. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it used to be a race track, and I think it went on fire or something. Anyway, developers got a hold of this big race track, and they've just built. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apartments. Oh, okay. And they have a big mall. That's right. It was a huge development. Yes. Know? But I thought you might know it from Coca Cola being there. Yeah, I can the, the picture Coca Cola because where was I the other day? I was just down in the city and I was also near the Campbell Soup Factory, mm. which is on the other end, down in Etobicoke, kind of the other corner. Right, and then uh, Red Path Sugar, right downtown, if you're familiar with that one. Not right on the lake. Yeah, right on the lake, off mm -hmm. the QE there. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Red Path. So, no, yeah. so you worked for OHIP for a while. Yeah, well, I, I, did, I did different jobs, different places. Uh, so, some, somewhere else I worked. Yeah, I worked for Coca Cola. There you go. Yeah. So, when did you start with the MNR? I really don't know. Why? But well, I was I was working with uh, OHIP. Yeah. That's Ontario Health Insurance Plan. I mean, in those days, to be a member of OHIP and have health coverage, you had to pay premiums. Mm -hmm. So every month, every so often, they would send you out a little card saying you had to pay three months premiums. I think it was something like thirty-six dollars a month or something like that. Anyway, in any event, after not too long, we decided to do away with the premiums and just make it free. But the thing is. Uh, the Ontario government decided that they had mayors from cities all over Ontario complaining to the government that all the government good paying jobs are on Toronto and why couldn't they get some of these good jobs their place, you know? Yeah. So the government decided to disperse the jobs. Right. Uh, and the next thing I know is that at OHIP they told me that Ministry of Health is going to Kingston. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't want to go to Kingston, so I immediately started looking for a job elsewhere, and that's why I got a job with MNR. Gotcha. They sent uh, forestry to Sault Ste. Marie, they sent the OPP to Owen Sound, I think. You should know about that. No, I really am. Oh, really? Is it? Ah, I can't. Yeah, the, you mean when they moved from downtown, the headquarters? Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they moved to Aurelia. Yeah. The well, headquarters is all I just there. mean that all these ministries got all They got scattered. displaced. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, because the Ministry of Health went to Kingston. Um, OPP went to Aurelia. Yeah, it's, they all kind of got displaced all over the place. Absolutely. So, if you were working in Toronto, were you living in Toronto or oh, yeah. were you living here? No, no. I have lived in Toronto since I came to Canada. So when did you move here? To Peterborough? When they made me move. Oh, okay. When was that? Well, first of all, we come along one day and said, we're relocating. We're going to the Tri-Towns. 
And we're all looking at each other and saying, what the hell is this fairy town, you know? What is it? And it turns out these are three little towns away up in the north Ontario, Haleybury, Cobalt and New Miscard, and they run late to Miskaming. Yep. Away above North Bay. Yep. So they said we're going to relocate there. So they got us all in these big buses so, and took us up there for a weekend and paid all the expenses, the accommodation and food the whole bit and took us all around these towns to see if we would like it and, uh, and then took us back to Toronto. And for some reason or other they changed their mind about that and they said we're not relocating to the dry towns now. We're going to relocate to Peterborough. Well, I'm going to ask you, what did you think of Cobalt and Haleybury and New Lisker? Well, I think in the summertime they would be nice, maybe, but I think they would be very severe in the wintertime. Have you been to Cobalt lately? No. There's not much there anymore. Well, I don't know. Because it was a mining town. I think, yeah, but I think, I think the Cobalt from there. Yeah, well, it is. It's, it's, uh, yeah, once, once the only reason for the time being there is gone, then there's no, no time. Yeah, I think it was probably a good move to go to Peterborough because, yeah, those northern communities, although they're still there, Cobalt has not flourished. New Liskard's doing okay. No, well, it starts you know, like Elliot Lake. Yeah. It used to be a, a mining or something up there, and then they run out, so the city paths have decided to try and make it a retirement community to see if they can keep the town alive by importing el elderly people to live there in the re retirement years. That's the only reason Elliot Lake exists right now. Yeah, and I don't know if it's working out or not. It's yeah, it has, a, it has a, a, a good population year-round, but they made it affordable, and they made it yeah. for retirement living, mm -hmm. living so that people could retire, still own their own home. A lot of people that live there tend to be uh, snowbirds, go south in the winter. Uh -huh. It's nice in the summer with the lakes and, and uh, the wilderness, but um, yeah, that's that's why Elliot Lake survives. Yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it's got a reasonable proximity to Sudbury, so for major shopping and things like that. But yeah, that's that's what they did with it for sure, because there's really no other reason for it. There's nothing else going on. There. <laughs> that's for sure. So Peterborough's done well by the MNR then. Well, they've got lots of a big payroll imported into Peterborough. Yeah. which must help the city economically a great deal. Oh, I would think so. Also around Peterborough, the expansion that's going on is unbelievable. Yeah. Every, every part right around the, the city has got housing developments going. Yeah, yeah. Peterborough is, is growing for sure. How long, the house you're in now, has that always been the house? Yeah, I moved into the house when I came here in 1995. Okay. So I've been in that house 19 years. Right. Okay. Um, my understanding is you had, uh, I want to say, like a, a long-time partner who passed away from cancer. Is that true? Who told you that? Oh, I know things. Well, I'd rather not talk about that. No, and I don't expect that you, you need to talk about it. I just... And that's my understanding is that you uh, you were involved and, and that's sad those are unfortunate circumstances but I don't know I certainly don't need to dwell on it or talk about it but that's our past and we all have pasts that's what makes us who we are right um, it's unfortunate absolutely absolutely it's called life right yeah Absolutely. You have to take it by the good Yes, whether we like it or not, right? Whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. How is your overall health? We talked a little bit earlier about you need your diabetic medicine this evening. But overall, how's your health? When it comes to diabetics, I sometimes wonder if doctors don't just tell me you're diabetic so they will have to go back every three months and get a prescription. Uh, okay. I find it very difficult to sit and listen to a doctor telling me I'm seriously ill 
and there's no signs and symptoms. So they've no. actually said you're seriously ill? They consider a person to, who's got diabetes to be seriously ill. Right. But that person's got no signs or symptoms. At least I don't have any signs and symptoms. Okay. Now, there are some diabetics who have to stab themselves uh, with insulin or something like that. Yeah. So Dave Clark's like that. Is he? Yeah. He has to do that. But you don't have to. No, I just take a pill in the morning and a pill at night. Okay. Other than the diabetes that they say you have, well, any other issues? I don't. Medically that you need prescriptions for? No, I I go prescription for the red and black capsules for acid reflux. Okay. Because the reason I got that was because I was eating loads and loads and loads of Tums and Rolades, you know these little tablets you get yep. for indigestion? Yes. And I was eating them like crazy and I thought that can't be good for you because they're full of calcium. Yep. You'll be getting your body all clogged up with chalk. So that's why I got the prescription for the acid reflux. Okay. Any, but any, I don't consider that a serious problem. No, 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 and I am... Um, it's more, to me, it's just like indigestion. Yeah. Is there any other prescriptions that you're on or that you need? No, I take an aspirin a day for, to thin my blood. Okay. And I've been doing that since I had a stroke in 2000. Okay. I take the glyburide one in the morning, one at night for the diabetes. Okay. And I take one of these other pills, I can't remember what it's called, one of these capsules uh, for acid reflux. Okay. That's all I take. Okay, perfect, good stuff. Right. Well, and like I say, we have your medications here. Mm -hmm. You will get your medications. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any injuries that I should be aware of? Anything that needs our attention? No. No? Okay. Do you have any injuries I can't see that, you know, sometimes people come in and they have stitches and it's no, covered up by clothes no, and stuff? No, no. No, you're okay? I bruise very easily. Okay. Because of the blood thinners. Yeah. And the diabetes. Yeah. For example, if I got a little scratch, it bleeds like crazy. And because of diabetes, it takes forever for it to heal up. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm always having scratches, abrasions, scrapes, bruises, what have you, all the time. Okay. But none of it bothers me. Okay. I'm used to it. No, and that's good. And now, I'm just making sure that because now you're here with us, if, you know, I've sat with people before that tell me I have a bad knee, I have a bad back, I twisted my ankle. These are things that I can't really see, yeah, but I need to ask people to know. Well, I, I've got, I've always had a bad back. But okay. But... <laughs> I don't, I don't do anything about it. I Are mean, you in any discomfort as you sit here with me right now? No. Okay. And, and those are the things I'm talking about, right? Because I don't... I don't think they can fix your back. If there's something wrong with your back, I don't think they can do anything about it. Yes. I, I wouldn't even mention it to the doctor. Okay. Yeah. Because I know he can't do anything about it. He's just wasting his time and my time. Yeah, well... You strike me as a very kind of logical person. Would you describe yourself that way? I think of myself as a very simple person. Logical and simple sometimes go hand in hand, right? I simple mean, not being a bad thing. Well, I don't mean I'm a simple person. No, 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 I didn't take simple mean, meaning no frills. I just mean, yeah, no frills, yeah. <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. I'm not talking simple as in... In uh, cognitive functioning, simple as in simple lifestyle, no frills. Yeah. How's that? Sound? Yeah. That's okay. Good. That's good. Would you describe yourself as pragmatic? I, I suppose to some extent. I think we all are to some extent. I don't know. Well, I've dealt with some highly emotional people. I'll tell you that I would not say they're pragmatic at all. It's like if, if uh, you know, if they had a hangnail. The sky is falling. The earth is ending. <laughs> I don't describe those people as overly pragmatic yeah, or logical. Yeah. We've all met those type of people, right? Highly emotional, high maintenance. You don't strike me as that. <laughs> no, no. Right? I think your lifestyle kind of 
No, my lifestyle is very simple. Very, very simple. And since you've retired, what what are, like, gosh, you've been retired, what, 20 years? Has it been that long? 19. Okay, 19 years. Unfortunately, on this job that I do, we see a lot of people that retire and then don't survive much into their retirement. They, you know, just because of lifestyle choices. You're 19 years into retirement, which is awesome. What do you What do you do? What do you like to do for you that keeps you occupied? I know you read. I know you run a simple uh, lifestyle. But what are your hobbies? What are your interests? What do you do? That varies over time. For example, when I retired at first. I used to go walking all over, especially when I got up to Peterborough. Right. Um, I used to walk all over the place, and I used to cycle all over the place. Okay. Uh, but as I get older, I'm not so able to Thank you very much. You're welcome. As I get older, the the physical activity has sort of tapered off. Uh, for example, when I came here at first, I could walk like 20 or 30 miles a day without any trouble at all. I used to go everywhere, yeah. all over the place, just exploring, because Peterborough was new to me then. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, as I age and I get weaker and weaker and weaker, uh, I don't do so much physical stuff now. Uh, in the summertime, I love to be in my yard. I'm in the yard. As long as it's not raining, I'm out in my yard every day in the summertime. In the wintertime, I try and do things, catch up with things that got neglected during the summer because I was out in the yard. Yeah. And I try to get caught up with some stuff like that. Right. So, what? What's your yard? When you say you're out in the yard, what are you doing? Oh, all sorts of things. Have I to use this as a Absolutely, nice? yeah. I put a little water in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, all sorts of things. For example, I used to cut my grass with a lawnmower. And then I would find that I would spend more time going right around the yard trimming, trimming the edge that the lawnmower can't reach. You understand what I mean? Yep. And I thought, this is crazy. So I put a concrete, I dug a little trench right around my house, about six inches deep and about four inches wide. And I put concrete in it. So I've got a concrete lip right around my house. Okay. So now when I cut the grass, I put a lot more wheels on the concrete thing and I don't have any edges to turn around the house. Uh, so that was successful, I thought. It saved me a lot of work. So I put under my fence, I put a chain link fence around my backyard. I got big pieces of wood and put them underneath. So now I can run the lawnmower. I've got maybe, let's say it's a 10 inch piece of wood and I've got it under the fence, and there's five inches this side and five inches that side of it. I can now run the lawnmower along this piece of wood, and that saves me having to trim the edges around there. So. Gotcha, okay. But there's there's some edges you still have to trim. You know, I, haven't got, I haven't got this all done. Perfectly. It's not a complete science yet. It's, not, it's, it's a work in progress. Well, it's and I have to clean the gutters and to clean the leaves out of the gutters. And I have a big flower bed. You know what they call the boulevard? Yep. This is an area eight feet wide between the sidewalk and the street. Well, it was such a mess. The grass, it's usually grass. But this grass was such a mess. It was just full of weeds. And it didn't matter what I did or how much I spent on it or how much time I gave. I couldn't get nice grass there. So I decided to just dig it up and make a flower bed. So I went to the city and asked them if they thought this would be okay, if they had any problems with that. And they said no, they didn't have a problem, as long as I didn't plant trees. 
because they didn't want the roots to go down and interfere with the pipes under yeah. the ground. So, so, so now I have a huge flower bed that stretches about maybe 40 feet by 8 feet. Uh, and that keeps me busy. Even just weeding it keeps you busy. What do you plant in it? What What do you? Flowers. Yeah, but what kind do you like? Perennials. Perennials. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stuff that's inexpensive and uh, the, and easy maintenance. You know? Yeah. Okay. Is there fall prep that's involved in that with perennials? Like I, I'm not familiar with perennials a lot. Like so, what kind I, of perennials would you plant? Oh, I got snowball bushes. Yeah. I've got spirey bushes, I've got peony roses, and I've got poppies. And, uh, other things I don't even know the name of them. Okay. But they come up every year, so I'm quite happy. Nice. But Paul's busy time, because I've also got lots of uh, irises and lilies. Yeah. I've got a big strip of irises and lilies right up the whole length of this thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the fall, I cut them all off of the ground. And I cut just about everything off of the ground. To get it ready for winter. In the, in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. It, and do you find, does any of the uh, city applications like salt and sand and calcium that they put on, does it hurt it at all or do you have to do anything well, to it? Well, it certainly doesn't help it. No, because I'm just thinking it's the boulevard, right? They're plowing right yeah. onto it. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you have to do anything special in the spring to bring it back to no, life? No, I usually I usually put something down. Either I usually mix my own soil. For example, I'll buy a big thing of peat moss and a big thing of loam and a big thing of topsoil, and, and I also recycle my tea leaves. Okay. So I get some of this, all these things in a big container, and I mix them all up yeah. and make my own topsoil. Okay. And then in the in the spring I'll put some down when I think it's necessary. But particularly near the road where the snow plant puts all the shit right. Yeah, right on top. Because uh, the soil for maybe a couple of feet at least from the the curb, it's just like grit. You know the grit that they mix with the salt? Yeah. So it's just it's just it's not like soil at all, it's just like a grit. Yeah. So yeah. I always put something down there to try and help the soil. Well, it's because of all the stuff they're putting on the streets, right? So mm -hmm. you're right, the sand, the grit, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. How much How much do you smoke still? I don't smoke a lot. No? No. So what would you say in a day you would smoke? Ten. Ten cigarettes a day? Yeah, about okay. ten cigarettes a day. Okay. And I drink every day, but I don't drink a lot. What are you drinking? I have an aperitif before my supper, usually about three or four o'clock. Yeah. And I have a glass of red wine with my supper. And that's the extent of my drinking. So if you were to ask me if I drink, I, I would have to say I drink every day. But I'm still, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not a drinker. <laughs> well, there's a big difference between somebody who drinks every day in the sense of just in front of a television occupying themselves with a box of beer or a bottle of whiskey versus a wine with dinner. It's very common for people to sit and have wine with dinner. That's a very common thing. I got about six or eight bottles of liquor. Yeah. Scotch, rye, rum, gin. Yeah. The sitting up in my house have been there for at least 20 years and I never touch them. Yeah. So. No, the reason I have it is usually it's for I've been coming across the border and I get a, a discount on it, so I, I buy something. Yeah. I don't buy it because I'm going to drink it. I just buy it because I'm getting, I'm getting a deal. I'm getting a deal. <laughs> Would that be the Scottish coming out in you? I, I don't, you wouldn't believe the stuff I buy that I don't need it, and I buy it just because it's on sale. But you don't need it? I've got dozens of boxes and tea bags. Dozens of boxes of tea bags. Yeah, but they won't go bad. I know. So I know. I know. That's why. And I if you recycle it, I mean, <laughs> and you like tea, so that's not really buying something that's not of any no, value. No, hopefully, use tea. hopefully, I'll be able to use it. Oh yeah, I mean, if tea doesn't. But go it's bad. like that with anything. I've got, I mean, I, I've got about a dozen tubes of toothpaste, for example. I get them special. When I see it on special, I buy some, and I buy far more than I can ever use. <laughs> 
Well, do you ever go to Costco in town here? No. I've, that, been, I've been in it. Yeah. But I don't have a membership, so oh, okay. I couldn't buy it. That's kind of the idea at Costco. Eh? Everything you buy is in bulk. Yeah. You can't buy one tube of toothpaste. It's like uh, a, a pack of three or a pack of six or something, right? Yeah. So same sort of idea, but. But I think it's really meant for families. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's the value in it, right? You're buying in bulk as opposed to if you're buying for yourself, right? Just because you're cooking. When you live life. alone, buying food's kind of difficult. You know? Yeah. For example, I can't buy celery because I would never eat the celery before it would go bad. It would go bad long before I could eat it. Yeah, but you like celery. I would like it. Yeah. yeah. When Lisa and I were together, what we used to do is we'd buy, I'd buy a celery and give her half. And she'd buy a cucumber and give me half the cucumber. And that way we were, these, things, these yeah. things that we couldn't eat by ourselves, we were able to eat by sharing 50-50, yeah. you know. Well, you know, well, that kind of makes more sense, because you're right. Like, I, I think of me and my situation, I've got to buy a lot of food, because a lot of it yeah. gets eaten. Yeah. One person, a whole stalk of celery would go bad. Oh, yeah. So you and yeah. Lise would share it, and you yeah. each get celery, but it gets used up. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's actually kind of a smart way to do it. Yeah. You know, talking about that, I, I don't know. You, you probably don't know Payne Street. Payne Street? Yeah, but I live. Yeah, I know where you live. I mean, yeah, I know the street. It's a very, very short street. Right. Just one block. And I don't know how many houses there would be. Maybe 16 or something houses. Okay. On that street, there's one, two, three, four. There's about eight elderly people who live alone. Just on your street? Mm hmm And do you know them all? No, well, no, no, well. But I often think to myself, we have got eight people getting in their car, going to the grocery store, buying groceries, going home, fixing a meal, in eight houses. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there was some way we could get these eight people to join forces and make one meal for the eight of them? And buy, buy one groceries for the eight of them and, and do, do something. Kind yeah. of like a commune. But of course, people people keep to themselves. They wouldn't want to get interested in that. But I often think that that would be an interesting thing. Well, and the other part with the, yeah, I agree with you. It's just, you probably like certain foods and other people may not like yeah, them. And yeah, yeah. You know how it goes. That right? would be a problem. But it's, it's like, it's smart thinking. Absolutely. Um, maybe you could start up a little business. Get everybody going, right? <laughs> no. Do you, yeah. Are they are they older than you? Younger than you? I honestly don't. Well, the lady next door is definitely younger than me. The lady next to her, she's probably about my age. There's a lady across the street. She's probably about my age. There's an old guy Al. Neeson or something his name is, and he's probably my age. There's Grace up at the corner, she's probably my age. So, apart from the woman next door, who I think, I would guess, is about 55, okay. uh, apart from her, all these other people are about my age, Okay. I would guess. Yeah. Well, you almost like need like a one central food service shopping and then kind of divide up the common things that you all use, right? Like you and Lee's yeah. used to do. Yeah. You and two other neighbors could share a head of lettuce or a stalk yeah, of celery yeah, yeah. or something. But How long were you and Lee's together, overall? From the fall of 2011 until the 20th of April to 2014. So from the fall of 2011 Till April the twentieth, you said two thousand and fourteen. So three-ish years. The reason I'm so sure about the date we split up is it's my birthday. The twentieth of April. Yeah. And that's the breakup day. Yeah. That's not fun. You know why we broke up? No. Because I was wearing jeans. 
you broke up because you were wearing jeans? Yeah. You got to explain that one to me. Well, I was to go to her place. We were going to go out for supper with our family. Right. And when I went, I was wearing jeans. And she said she didn't want me to wear jeans. She wanted me to wear pants. And this, I couldn't understand this, because she always wanted me to be dressed up like a tailor's dummy, you know, the suit, the dress shirt, the tie, and just like you, exactly like you. You're calling me a tailor's dummy? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But anyway, what got me was that when we went out of the family, the family never wore any suits or ties or shirts or anything else. The family all wore standard Peterborough dress, which is t-shirts and jeans. Right. So I had these jeans on, and they were perfectly nice jeans. They weren't scruffy, ragged, and they were almost new. Yeah. Perfect condition. And I had a brand new t-shirt on, in perfect condition, perfectly clean. And so I thought I was presentable, and I thought I was dressed as well as a her son and her son-in-law and her grandkids, because they were all in jeans and t-shirts. So I, I didn't think it was a problem, but she got real mad about that. And that's why you broke up? Mm. Where did you go that day? Like, I, went, I went home. No, no, but like you said everybody else was wearing jeans and a t-shirt. You were wearing jeans and a t-shirt, so where did everybody go? Like, Was it a party for you? Because it's your birthday. It wasn't just my, no, it wasn't just my birthday. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it was her son's birthday. I'm not sure, but it wasn't just for me. Right. No. Uh, <clears throat> you see, the thing is, every three or four weeks, they seem to have some sort of compulsion to have a fight. Now, we had no serious problems right. to have a fight about. She was comfortably off, I'm comfortably off. She owned her own home, all paid for. I owned my own home, all paid for. She owned her car, paid for. I owned my car, paid for. No religious problems. She wasn't religious, I wasn't religious. No political problems. She wasn't a political person. I'm not a political person. No family problems, because I have no family at all. So she didn't have to worry about me paying alimony or child support or anything else like that. Right. I had absolutely no family problems. And her family seemed to like me, and I certainly got on well with all her family. We didn't have any problems at all with her family. So with no family problems. Right. So as far as I was concerned, there was not a serious problem between us at all. Because of this, in this compulsion to fight, she would have to dream up the most stupid, trivial junk you can imagine to have a fight. Now, in the early days when she started this, I would argue with her. But very soon realized that I would waste of time arguing with her because she just would not listen. Right. So what I did was, when I saw this fight coming, and I could see it coming, after I'd been with her so long, I could see this coming, and I knew it was coming. Right. So what I did that, I would just go home. And I don't think she liked that, because then she'd no be to fight with. Anyway, I used to just leave the house and go home. So, you wouldn't believe these things you start fighting about. <laughs> you would not believe it. Anyway, this day I'm talking about, 20th of April, she was annoyed because I was wearing jeans. So, I saw it coming, and I just got up, and I left. And I was getting in my car, and I had my bum on the seat, and my right foot on the floor, but my left foot was still outside the car. And she came out storming out after me, and she grabbed the car door and started banging the car door to try and break my leg between the car frame and the door. Yeah. 
So anyway, eventually I was able to keep the door from banging my leg. And uh, I told her just to go in and leave me alone. And uh, she went inside and I went home. And that is why we broke up. Because of the I was wearing jeans. What? What other things? Yeah, what other things? One time, she had a china teapot and I used to make tea. And one time I was washing the, the teapot and I got a little chip in it. A tiny little chip like, like that. That had no bearing on the teapot or how it worked or if it didn't work or how it poured or anything. It had no bearing at all on the functioning of this teapot. Oh God, you think I you think I had demolished the house. The nonsense, the, the fine, the temp, terrible temper. Yeah. And always violence with the temper. You know, I got Did you out, say violence with the temper? Yeah, it okay. got out of hand. What would she do? Oh, well, she, I tried to break my leg with the car door. Yeah, yeah. Another time she had this, I had this big carton of milk. The big, I think it's two liters, I'm not sure, but it's a big one. And it was full, but it had been opened. And another time she threw that at me and oh. That'll give you an idea how, when she got into this temper, she seemed to lose it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, For yeah. example, if it was me, who would say to myself, did I want to throw this can of milk at her and have milk all over the bloody place that I'm going to have to clean up? I don't think so. She didn't think like that. Right. She would just let fly. She didn't give a shit to her. What happened? It was like she was out of it. Yeah. She feel away. And, and then would she come back into it? Like would she... I always did. I took off. Oh, okay. But you know, it's, it's the simplest things. If I put a plate in the dishwasher for home, now I have never in my life had a dishwasher. I don't know dishwashers from a hole in the ground. I know nothing about dishwashers. Right. If I put a plate in the dishwasher the wrong way, oh my God, you'd think I'd done some murder or something. It's just, and it's because we didn't have a, a serious problem at all, right. that she had to pick on these really stupid things that she wanted to have a fight. Why do you think she wanted to have a fight with I you? I don't know. It seemed to be some sort of compulsion. Okay. Everything could be going along just beautiful. She's happy, I'm happy, we're madly in love, da 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 da, -da. But three or four weeks, boom. And then after that's finished, we're back in love with her. She's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> She's happy. Really, eh? For three or four weeks, and boom. <laughs> and whenever the fights would happen and you would leave, who would make up? That was a problem. Was it? That's why she went to these other guys. Tell me about that. Why did she go to these other guys? You need to ask her that, but <laughs> here's a woman who told me she loved me. I was the greatest thing in sliced bread. Oh boy, I was a keeper. We were going to spend the rest of our life together. And then <laughs> we'd have a fight and I'd go home. And both of us, I think, were probably too stubborn and too pig-headed and too proud to make amends, which is what we should have done. Right. Anyway, in no time at all, after I'd gone home and we split up, she was, had another boyfriend. Okay. Uh, that relationship with that boyfriend didn't work out. It only lasted them two or three months, maybe. Okay. And we could buy it together again. Oh, excuse me. No problem. Uh, 
then after we go back, before we go back together, we sat down and had a talk. And I said, obviously, if we're going to go back together, we've got to change our ways. If we get back together and we don't change anything, we're going to get the exact same result. We're going to s split up again. Right. Oh, yes, you're right. She said, oh, yes, we'll change. Oh, yeah, da 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 da. Right? She didn't change at all. She couldn't. Right. I just, I don't think it's in her nature to change. <laughs> I did everything I could to make her happy. I colored her hair. I cleaned her shoes, I pressed her pants, I sewed them down for her, I grew a moustache for her. Bank will make a moustache, but I grew a moustache for her. I did yard work for her, I did housework for her. I was down my hands and knees, scrubbing the kitchen floor, the bathroom floor, cleaning the toilet, cleaning the tubs around. I couldn't tell you the number of things I did to try and make her happy. Right. Anything she asked me to do, I did. Only one thing, one time, I just refused point blank. And that was the only time I ever refused her anything the whole time I knew. And what was that? Well, she wanted to go to Quebec to visit her relatives in Quebec. And I didn't want to go to Quebec because I don't know her relatives and I don't speak French, so I figured I'd be just like, I, you know, I'd be useless. I'd just be tagging along. Right. I wouldn't be able to engage in conversation or anything else. Yeah. So, anyway, oh, she went on and on and on and on and on. And I said, okay, I'll go to Quebec with you. So we're going to go to Quebec. She wants me to take my car. And I said, no, I'm not taking my car. And she just want to go to Quebec. And she just got relatives in Quebec. I don't want to go to Quebec. And I'm certainly not going to use my car to go to Quebec. And that was another big carry-on. She didn't want to use her car. Oh. Lise never liked to use her car if she could use somebody else's car. Because then somebody else was paying for the gas and she didn't have to pay for the gas. Gotcha. So whenever we went anywhere, we went in my car. But that was one time where I just dug my heels in and I said, no, I'm not taking my car. If I never went to Quebec, I'm not taking my car. So we took her car. And how did that whole trip go? Very good. Okay, good. But, like I suspected, I was completely out of it. I couldn't yeah. engage in the combat. You know, she was taking me to see all these relatives and all over the place, you know. And they were happy to see her and happy to be chatting. And it was, but it's all in French. And I don't speak French. So, from my point of view, it was really just a waste of time. Yeah. But I think maybe she wanted to show up her new boyfriend to her relatives. I don't know. Well, when was this trip? How long ago? Oh, jeez. I can't remember. Well, just if you said new boyfriend, I'm thinking like 2011, 2012. No, we... It doesn't matter anyway. I, I mean, you went and... It, it was it as you thought it would it be. Wasn't, it wasn't 2011. That's okay. for sure. So is, is Lee's, was she, is she a drinker? No. No. So no, no alcohol issues? Oh, absolutely. That's another thing. We had no alcohol problems because I don't drink. She didn't drink. And neither of us do drugs, so we had no drug problems. There was no one serious thing where we had conflict. So then I'm going to ask you, in your opinion, what was her problem? I have no idea. No problems, no issues, you're doing everything for her. 
Um, you guys are in a committed relationship. You love each other, is that right? But she picks these I, silly I fights. Loved, I loved her. her very, very much. You loved her. Did she love you? I don't know. No. Did she ever tell you she did? Oh, oh she all the time, yeah. 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 But you can't, you can't go by that. I put other women tell me they love me and they're sleeping with somebody else. And I say, have you ever told somebody you loved them when you didn't really and you just didn't want to hurt their feelings? I don't think so. Okay. No, because, I mean, it can happen. I agree with you. Oh, it can sure, happen, right? sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't take relationships lately. You would never in a million years get me doing a, get me doing a one night stand. Right. It's just not going to happen. Well, over the course of your lifetime, and I don't need to go into the details of them, how many relationships have you had? I've had maybe half a dozen relationships, but none of them were short-term relationships, except the one where the woman turned out to be alcoholic, but I didn't know, when I met her, I didn't know she was alcoholic. Right, yeah. But relationships I've had in my lifetime, they've all been long-term, very serious, committed relationships. Right. So when you were with Lee's, is it accurate, fair for me to say, that you weren't stepping out on her, you were faithful to her? I never even thought of this thing. Are you crazy? I'm not like that. No, no, and that's what I'm gathering, right? What about her? I never... Well, she did step out. Couple of times. Right, so that's what I'm saying. Like, was she as faithful and as committed to you? I'm, I can't tell you that. All I can tell you is she told me she loved me. What about this um, unattached club that she's part of? That's a nice place. Is it? Yeah. Very nice place. Okay. Yeah. Well run. Very well So, what's the idea behind it? Like, just is it a, like a social? For it's people? just a social club where people go to dance. Okay. And it's called unattached, but in actual fact, about 95% of the people who go there are attached. Oh. <laughs> there are very, very few unattached people who go there. So they're attached, but do they go there with their partner, or they're going yeah, there? No, no, there are lots of them are husbands and wives, or, in, or, the, or they're in a serious relationship. Oh, and they're just going for a social? They're going to dance and okay. socialize. Oh. And, how and it's very nice. Yeah. How did you meet Lee's? I met her there. Okay. Yeah. So who was the um, the catalyst, if you will, is to get you two together? You saw her, she saw you. How did that all happen? Jeez, I don't remember. I, I guess I asked her to come and sit at my table. Yeah. Which she did, and we went from there. What did you notice about her? You're, I'm sure you're not asking every lady to sit at your table, so why Lee's? Why, why her? Well, she seemed like a nice lady. Yeah. And she had a nice accent. And I thought she might be interesting to talk to. And things just kind of went on from there. Mm hmm So, how, like, did she actually say the words to you that she didn't want you to wear jeans and that's why she was so upset with you on the 20th of April? Oh, yeah. She said she told me previously to wear pants. And I do not remember her telling me that to wear pants. I honestly do not remember her telling me that. But she said she had told me previously that she wanted me to wear pants. But to me, it's just it's so trivial, it's so unimportant. I can't see how anybody would even get upset with something like that. If they were all scruffy jeans or something, all torn and raggedy and dirty and everything, then I could understand her being upset. But these were perfectly nice jeans, not very old at all, and they were just clean, just being washed, pressed. So I, I just couldn't see why she got upset. Breaking up that way has to be tough for a silly issue like that. Does that make sense? They were all silly issues. All silly issues. Did you try and get back together with her after that? 
No. No. That was it? Because that's what, April 2014? I, sh I should have, but I didn't. And she should have, but she didn't. That's what I was saying. We're probably just two big headed, stubborn well, buggers, you know, who, who are too proud to eat humble pie. Do you miss her? But, oh, God. <laughs> Well, we, we kept in touch a lot after that. Oh, okay. So it's not like it was cold turkey. But, uh, well, very shortly after we broke up, she started going with Ben. Okay. Uh, so then, no question, it's getting back together again. Did she, you? Uh, she had a new boyfriend. Do you know who this Ben guy is? Oh yeah, well these, these guys she went with, the guys at the, at the club. Okay. Right. That's got to be hard. Like, were you still going to the club after then for the socials on your own? Oh yeah, yeah. Was that hard seeing her there with other people? Well, we had split up completely. Yeah. Uh, at first, when we split up, we still saw each other, you know. She would come to my place, I would go to her place, and we were friends. Yeah. And we would dance together on a Saturday night. Uh, but it seemed to me, I don't know why, maybe, maybe the boyfriend didn't want her to be friends with me, I don't know. Anyway, we finished up with her. Uh, she had complained to the police about me. Right. Because I was mad one time and I wrote a little note to her. And it was not a nice note. It, it was a nasty note. And um, I regret very much having sent that. But still, there's nothing I can do about that now. Anyway, when she got this note, she complained to the police. The police came and saw me and told me that I shouldn't be bothering her. Right. And I said that was fine and then, uh, <clears throat> so after that we weren't talking to each other, we weren't friendly. Do you think I could have another cigarette? Okay. Well, let's go. If you don't mind? No. I have my own cigarettes, you know, but they won't let me have them. It's all good. Gotcha. You don't smoke. I haven't smoked in a while. Give it up. I can sit here now and it doesn't even bother me. Like, I don't have the desire for it. How did you do that? Did you do any special sort of thing? Did you get hypnotized or something? No, I just decided, you know what, when I had kids, I just decided that's not really what I want them to see. Yeah. And uh, it was just more, you know what, I just don't need to do this anymore, and I just went cold turkey. And that was it. And it wasn't, you know, not easy, not fun, yeah. but um, I'm glad I did it. And now I'm at a point where I can be around it, I can sit with people, and I don't have any desire, like I'm good. That's amazing. Yeah, so. Because I quit smoking once long, long, long ago, and I quit for about two years, I think, and I went home to Scotland for yeah. vacation. <laughs> And it was New Year's. And New Year's in Scotland is something else again. It's <laughs> not like New Year's in Canada. Right. Everybody's partying and drinking and going crazy. And somebody said to me, I'll just have a cigarette, you know, one cigarette on what do you So I took a cigarette and that was me right back. Yeah. It's okay. It happened. But you know what really bothered me? When I stopped smoking, I never lost the desire for the whole two years. I wanted to smoke. Oh, really? Eh? You Constantly, still had the craving? Every day. Yeah. And that made it really difficult. See, I lost the craving, and, and some people associate it with, like, if they have a coffee or a tea, they will, sometimes it becomes habit forming, right? Yeah. yeah. And I just, yeah, I, I, I don't really have any special recipe how I did it, I just did it. And, yeah. yeah. Well, when I get, when I quit smoking, I quit cold turkey, I just gave it up. And I think I could have been successful if I hadn't been for this constant longing. Yeah. Every day, longing to have a cigarette. It just wouldn't go away. 
There's worse things you could be doing. Hmm. Right? Well, I've been smoking since I was 10 years old. And I'm, I'm in reasonable shape. 66 years of smoking. <laughs> so there you go, roughly. Well, I'll take away the two years yeah. you quit, so we're down to 64. Yeah, yeah. When, you know, this investigation is, you know, it's ongoing and that, but when is the last time that you saw Elise? When's the last time you would have seen her? The Saturday before she disappeared. So the sun, okay, so she... You see, they've taken my calendar. If I had my calendar, I would be able to... Let's see if I can assist you with something here. I don't have your calendar. That's not what I'm looking for. But no, any calendar would do. That's what I'm just looking for, yeah. Okay. Uh, we could even work back from today. Well, I have a calendar here, so let me find it. Well, what you this is, you said this is the 22nd. It is, all day. So 7 from 22 is the 15th. The last time I saw Lee's right there was Saturday the 15th. If you've got a calendar there, you can check that. I'm going to check that for you right now. Well, we were not talking to each other all the time, but I didn't, because she said that please saw me a second time. Right. Have you spoken to uh, Ian Maxwell? There we go. So that's a calendar for November yeah. 2014. Okay, so that's this year. So the last time I saw these... So we're here on the 27th. Yeah, the last time I saw these was last Saturday. Okay. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. But, as I said, we did not speak to each other or dance with each other or even look at each other because... Have you spoken to Ian Maxwell? I haven't, no. Oh, well, he's a policeman who came to see me a couple of times. Okay. And the second time he came, he made it absolutely clear I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. Uh, so I took his words to heart and I never never even looked at them. Never looked at what? Ben or Lee's. Oh, sir, because he's the one that came and spoke to you and said, after the letters, is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. You can speak, it might, might help you to speak to him. Well, what's going on? He's a very nice child. Yeah, he's with the Peterborough service here? Yeah. Okay. Have you spoken to Dave Clark? I just got here today. Oh, I ran the first person you've spoken to. You're the guy. Oh. Okay. I'm going to ask you, why... How are you so sure that's the last time you saw him? And I'm just wondering in your mind why you think it was that day. Because I saw her every Saturday. We both went to the dance every Saturday. She went missing on the 12th. So is it possible it's a different Saturday that you saw her? I saw her the Saturday before she disappeared. Okay, that's fair then. So what I'm just telling you is that on the 12th is the day that she went missing. So that we know for sure, okay? So if you said you saw her the Saturday before she went missing, is it possible then that you're talking about the 8th? It must be. Okay. It must be. I just want to. I just want to make sure, you know, yeah. because you said the fifteenth, which I understand, but we know she went missing on the twelfth. So if it's the Saturday, if it's one Saturday before, which is what you recall, that would take us to November the eighth. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So perhaps this is the day we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And is that at the dance? Well, yeah, I, I blew us a week somewhere. Okay. Well. Do you remember Veterans Day? Do you remember Remembrance Day? No, I remember they come and took me away on this day. Yes, the 13th. They took me away that day and they kept me a week. 
Right. And they let me have this day. Can I just they let me have this day? When you say they let you out, you're referring to what? You said they came and took you away. What are you talking about? Like, what are you referring to? They came on Thursday and, took, and they spoke to me for hours. Yes. And then they took me away about 6 30 roughly. Okay. And put me in a hotel. Okay. I see what you're talking about now. They kept me in a hotel from there to here. And they let me out yesterday. Right. And here we are today. The 22nd. They arrested me today. Yes. So I spent the night from Thursday to Friday and the night from Friday to Saturday at home. Yes. So this is Remembrance Day. You remember they came and they asked you to leave on the 13th, this yeah, day. Yeah. And that's because on the 12th, she's missing. I don't know why she's missing. No, no, that's what I'm telling you. I don't okay. know. I so, don't even know how you know that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how I know. I'll explain it to you. Okay, but I, I'm just, if we work backwards, like you said, then if you recall seeing her last on the Saturday before she went missing, that would be the 8th. The simple thing is, both she and I went to the dance every Saturday. Gotcha. We weren't talking, we weren't dancing, we weren't having any sort of communication whatsoever. But we were there. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with that. I don't have any issues with that. Every Saturday. Okay. So if you saw her the Saturday before... So if she's he, missing here, obviously she wasn't at the dance that night. No. Did you I go to the think, dance that I night? I don't think I went to the dance that night. No, I didn't go. On the 15th? Hmm? Yeah, on the 15th you didn't go? No, well, I... The police had taken me away. Right. You were in a hotel? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the, the 8th at the dance. After the 8th, which is the Saturday, did you yeah, see her? I saw her last Saturday, too. The 1st? Okay. Did you see her any time after the Saturday at the dance? No. Okay, so that's the last time? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. What do you, you know that lawyer told me I hadn't to speak to you? Yeah. You don't have to. I told no. you that at the beginning as well, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. You are the one person that knows Lee's better than anybody right now. I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, I'm just talking about in that, you know, you did have a relationship with her. Oh, yes. What? Uh, yeah, generally speaking, a very good relationship. Oh, I, I, I totally, I believe. You. What do you think happened to her? Why would, why would no something? Idea. I have no idea. Why would somebody do this to her? I don't know. I do know she was involved with other men. Right. I even suggested to one of the policemen that it could have been a home invasion. Who knows? Who knows what happened? Yeah. Who are these other men she's involved with? I don't, I don't know all the men she's involved with. I just know for a fact Dave Clark and Ben Kalman. Yeah. Dave Clark she was going with very soon after we broke up the first time. Ben Kalman she was going with very soon after we broke up the second time. So up until here where we know she went missing, was she seeing anybody that you know of? Ben Kalman. She is seeing Ben still. She's been seeing Ben since very shortly after we broke up. Which was 20th of April. Yes. And that's, yeah. Forgive me for my language, but you know what? That's kind of shitty. What is? What she did. It, only in the sense that, you know what? You jump from one relationship right to the next. What does that say about you and your relationship? 
That's just my opinion. I just put that out there. I probably shouldn't even have said that, but that, I just the way I kind of look at it. You know what I'm going to tell you? If I live to be 192, I will never understand women. And it may be that that's why I'm a bachelor. Because I take things very seriously. Yeah. Things like relationships and promises and vows. I couldn't get married. I could have to vow to be faithful to this woman for the rest of my life. So you could or couldn't get married? I could not get married because I couldn't take that vow. But why? If you take things very serious, would you not be faithful for the rest of your life to that person? I'm sure as hell would try, but I'm a human being. Yeah. And when I was younger, I was as horny as the next guy. So although I would maybe take a vow, there's no guarantee that I would be able to keep it. And if I couldn't keep a vow, I would not make that vow. Did I take vows very, very seriously. Did you two ever talk about getting married? Was there ever any talk about that? No. no. I find, I'm just speaking generally, yeah. Yeah. women, elderly women like my age group, they've got their own home, it's paid for, they've got their own car, they've got their family, they've got their kids, their grandkids. They don't need a relationship. They don't need a man in their life. Right. Especially in some cases where the women have had a bad relationship before right. and have got out of it, the last thing they want to do is jump from the frying pan into the fire by having another relationship with a guy. Yeah. So it seems to me that the average woman in my age group is simply not interested in having a serious relationship because they've got no need for it. In some cases, yeah, if it's a widow you're talking about, if they were to, they're dead scared of getting into some kind of relationship that might jeopardize a dependent pension that they get, you know, for being a widow. Yeah. They don't want to jeopardize that because as far as they're concerned, they're putting their hands over to in the push. Yeah. It seems to me that attitude is sort of, if it's not broken, don't fix it. They're quite happy, they've got their family, their kids, their grandkids, and their friends, and their social circles. They really don't need anything else. Well, and what's your attitude about that? Because you're also of that age group. You have your own house that's paid for. You don't have any I, headaches. No, but I know like them in as much as I have no company. Would you have liked to have gotten to a point with her that the two of you lived together? I wouldn't live together. No. Because if you live together under the laws in Ontario, you're automatically married, whether you like it or not. Despite that side of it. You're right, okay, in what you're thinking. But how do you how would you see the long term relationship going then? Just each living in your own home but being committed to each other? Well, that's the way it was going, and it was going okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah. But I can only tell you about this from my point of view. Absolutely. I've got no idea what Lisa was thinking or what was going through her mind or anything else. No, you're right, and I can only ask you from your point of view because I haven't had an opportunity to talk to her. Well. No. You should talk to other people though, and get their views. Oh, we are. Absolutely. This investigation has taken on a whole new direction now that we're here. Okay. Um, I guess you have to start from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we but And there's some things I want to share with you here today that we're doing so you understand what's going on. Because we have... Uh, we do things very different, okay? And we have access to a lot of things that we're now going to utilize because this is... Make no mistake, this is, in our opinion, a, a death investigation, a homicide. Mm -hmm. Okay, we believe she's dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, people don't just drop off the face of the earth mm -hmm. and cease to exist. There's been no activity on her bank accounts. Uh, nobody's heard from her. Nobody's seen her. 
like there's a lot of other things we'll talk about, but that's just not normal, and you know that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so we have other things that I'll discuss with you that logically, when we look at it, yeah, she's dead, and I know that. Um, so, you know, and we believe that somebody's responsible for mm -hmm. that. Me? Yeah. 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 But, but you've charged me with murder. Well, yeah, those are the charges before the courts. Yeah, and I'm going to explain to you why, so you understand yeah. why, okay? Yeah. But um, you're right, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to her, but we are now talking to a lot of people and getting a big picture of what's going on here. And i got a lot of other things that we're working on now, too. Well, this is exactly what the Peterborough police told me. What did they tell you? Well, I was speaking to this guy. Dan LeMay. Okay. And I was saying to him, well, did you speak to Ben? Oh, no, I'm not speaking to Ben. Somebody else will speak to Ben. And I said to him, well, did you speak to Dave Clark? Oh, no, I'm not speaking to Dave Clark. Somebody else will speak to Dave Clark. And said, well, did you do this? Oh, no, I'm not do You know, it seems to be uh, everything's all mixed up. And I'm saying to myself, can they not have the one guy go and speak to everybody and then he maybe understand what the hell's going on instead of having half a dozen different detectives speaking to half a dozen different people. I have a team of investigators here now. They are speaking to Ben. They are speaking to Dave. They are speaking to her daughter. They are speaking to her son. They are speaking to her grandkids. They are speaking to people at her work. They are speaking to neighbors. They are canvassing the neighborhoods. Um, I have officers down at the Center of Forensic Sciences working with the scientists saying, hey, these are the exhibits we submitted, get working on them, get it done. Mm -hmm. There's other techniques that we're working on here right now that I have officers assigned to exclusively just make those calls and get those things done. Okay? This has now become what we call a joint forces investigation where we are the lead. Okay? With the Peterborough Police. Yeah, that's why we're in their building. Okay? because it all started in their city, but we have now taken over the lead, and we have brought in our own investigators, um, and things are like, as you and I are sitting here right now, there's all kinds of things that are happening. There's all kinds of things that are being done, period. And, I, and some of them I'm gonna to explain to you and show you so you understand what's going on, okay? Um, because this, this just took way too long. Way too long. It's taken too long? This has taken way too long. Oh. Way too long. I mean, really, she goes missing on the 12th, and, and, and there's all kinds of stuff that's happened there in the meantime. So, you know, and nobody even uh, came to you and got a formal statement from you in the meantime. I mean, you were with her for years. Like, that shouldn't happen. Okay, but but as a result, we, we got involved. We, we, uh, we got some well, results back right said, away. Please. The police zeroed in on me right from the get go. Why do you think that they would do that? I have no idea. Presumably somebody must have told them stuff. Okay, well, this day right here. What bothers me is. Yeah. By zeroing in on me, maybe there's things ha that, that they could have discovered that they're not going to discover now. You cannot get tunnel vision. Ever. Okay. Well, the police, the Peterborough police definitely had tunnel vision here. Believe me. We, uh, one of the biggest things, I've been doing this job for 25 years, you cannot get tunnel vision because the moment you get tunnel vision, the blinders are on. It's like that racehorse going down the track with the blinders That's on. That's exactly okay. what this is like. <laughs> Here's the way I approach my investigations, okay? The evidence will take us where we need to be. That makes sense to you? Well, it depends what you call the evidence. I'm going to share some of it with you, okay? But evidence will always take you where you need to be. Now, sometimes evidence can come up that we think is evidence. could be a red herring. Mm. But then you got to walk down that path. you got to investigate it. you got to exhaust it and then make a decision and say, nope, that's not important. Back away. As this investigation is going on right now, we're going down several different paths, clearing and making sure we've covered off everything properly. Mm -hmm. You have to be... Th the, make no mistake, these are serious, serious allegations. Period. Somebody's life has been taken. Uh -huh. We don't take that lightly. We, In fact, I can't think of anything more serious to be working on. Yeah. Okay? In her memory, 
for her, for her, her kids, family. for her grandkids, for her family, for the community, for everybody that's missing her right now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we still don't have her body. Well, I'll tell you, there's nobody missing her more than I miss her. I believe you. I believe you. Right? And that's tough. I mean, you were with her for years. Yeah. You, you knew her intimately. Yeah. I'll never get that chance to talk to her, to have a conversation with her, to hear her accent. I'll never, yeah. ever have that opportunity. You did. Yeah. Right? And I believe you when you say that you miss her dearly. I do. I sit here and look at you. I'm going to say you're still in love with her. Yeah, but the, the problem with me is being completely alone. Uh, I think that tends to make me different from other people. In what way? In as much as other people have their family, their friends, their relations, and uh, the social activities they do, they have lots of things going on in their life. Yeah. My life is very, very quiet. There's nothing going on in my life. In fact, I was just saying to a friend, a friend stopped by yesterday to speak to me. And I was just saying to him, my big problem is that I spend 95% of my time in this house alone. So no matter what crime would be committed in Peterborough, I could not give the police an alibi. I see what you're saying, yeah. The only time I'm not in my house is if I go for groceries, which usually takes just half an hour tops. Yeah. Or if I go to the doctors, which is only once every three months or something. Yeah. The vast majority of my time is spent in the house alone. It's not so bad in the summer because I'm always working in my yard in the summer. I'm in my yard every day in the summertime. Okay, but in, you know, okay, I'm going to ask you something because I think it, this is something we can work on here. There's some techniques that I have, things that we're looking at, that even though somebody says I'm in my house 95% of the time alone, I don't have an alibi. Yeah. There's some techniques that I can utilize that will assist me in whether that's the truth or not. Well, it's funny you say that because when Mr. LeMay was talking to me for hours, he raised one or two questions. And it just so happens that I'm a real recycling nut. I recycle everything that can be recycled. Are you cool? No. You're good? I'm okay. Okay, I saw you crossing your arms. I was going to put the heater on. Um, so you're a recycling nut. I even recycle my grocery receipts. Okay. And it just so happened that this Mr. Lene was talking to me about where I was or what I was doing and I was trying to, and I was telling him. But I don't think he believed me. And then it just dawned on me and I went into where I keep these recycled papers. Yeah. And uh, I dug up receipts, and the receipts proved to him that I was where I said I was. Okay, so, so what but are we... It's a chance in a million that a person would keep a grocery receipt, you know? So what is it you were, like, what were you talking about? What was the receipt for? For bananas or bread and stuff like that. Just stuff for the grocery. He had asked me where I was, and I had told him where I was. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Well, I couldn't prove that I was there, where I said I was. What day was he talking about? And then, I can't remember. But anyway, it just dawned to me, the receipts that I recycle. Gotcha. And I went and I got a couple of receipts, and these proved to him that I was where I said I was, when I said I was there. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But the chances of that, that, that happening in a million times, well, who, who keeps her grocery receipts? I don't. Nobody keeps her grocery receipts. Well, and if I was, okay, so I mean, I know she went missing on this day, the 12th, which is a Wednesday. Where were you that day? That, I think that's the day she was talking about. Okay. Um, and, and I can... Um, I can certainly go and get that receipt. Did you give it to him? Or did he make a copy of it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But if, if the 12th is the day you're talking about, are you saying you went grocery shopping on the 12th? 
I went to a bunch of different places. Okay. What about at I night on the twelfth? If, if, if I have stuff to get, I usually draw a little list and try and make a route of it. So I go here first, then there, and then there, and then there. Yeah. And uh, that day, I had gone to Farm Boy. Okay which is a grocery store. Yeah. But I didn't buy anything at Farm Boy, so I didn't have a receipt. Okay. Because the thing I was looking for there, they didn't have. Anyway, from there I went to Peterborough this week to get a copy of the newspaper. Okay. And I went to a couple of other places where I did buy something and I did have receipts. Okay. So the while I couldn't prove that I'd been to one or two of these places, I could prove that I had definitely been to one or two other places. And are you referring to the 12th? I can't remember. The Wednesday? I can't remember what it was. We spoke for so long. No, but that's what they I'm asking. They were with me. So they could have came in at about 1 o'clock. So I was trying to have my lunch when they came in. And that's fair. I understand. So I, I wanted to get my supper, but I couldn't get my supper because they were right there in my face. Yeah. So I didn't get any supper that night. But if I ask you now, what do you remember the 12th? I don't want it to. I know it's supposed to be speaking to you. And you don't have to. It, yeah, I know. So, okay. I, so I don't think I should. But I, here's the thing. If you are grocery shopping on those days and you have some receipts, which I'll check on, but you the other should, thing is... You should be speaking to these other guys. We are. I have people here now doing it. Okay, but are you speaking to Dan LeMay? Yes, absolutely. I had him called in today. Okay. And don't forget Ian Maxwell. Uh, there's Ian Maxwell, there's Dan LeMay, there's uh, these two boyfriends, Dave, you spoke of, and Ben are being spoken to. I've got her family in here right now. Okay, but... They're nice kids, by the way. They seem very nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the other thing I wanted to you know, think about is, on this day, even though you didn't get a receipt, you remember how I talked about the fact that there's cameras everywhere? Yeah. Even though you walked in a store and didn't buy something, I'm going to go pull the video. Because they keep the video for a while, right? I'll pull the video, it shows you walking in, even though you didn't buy some, it that validates what you're saying. That reminds me. The Peterborough police told me they had me on video at Walmart. And I said to them, that is absolutely impossible because I have not been near Walmart. Yeah, I don't know anything about and that. And they said, well, we've got a video. You're on the video. And I said, well, can, Who I, told see, you that? can I see the video? Oh no, we have her. Oh no, yeah. Who told you that? The serious thing about the police, they want you to answer all their questions, but they never, ever answer your questions. Ask me a question. I've answered your question so far today, I'll answer the rest of them. I, I'm talking about my experience with the police right. so far. Yeah. It's been anything but good. Been a very, very I'm going to tell you experience. right now, I don't know anything first about a Walmart all, First video. of all, when they took me away on Thursday, they said, oh, we'll just be for tonight. You'll get back home tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow came, I am all packed up in my hotel room, ready to go home. They come and say, oh, no, you're not going home to her. It'll be tomorrow. So I get unpacked my stuff and spend another night in the hotel. The next morning I got pack all my stuff ready to go. They come and say, oh no, it'll be, it'll be tomorrow. This goes on for a solid week, lying to me every single day. That stops today. Looking me right in the eye and lying as sweet as you like. That stops today. So the only thing that's going on in this room right now is the truth. My experience with the police has not been good. Especially the sisters. You should see the mess of my house. You would not believe it. I want to share a couple of things with you okay. to show you that I'm here to give you some info. Okay? okay? This isn't all about, you know, me wanting info from you. You want, you asked me a couple of things earlier, and I want to address them for you. Okay? 
You asked me how, first of all, how do we know she's even missing and, and when she went missing? That's what you asked me, right? Is that, is that what you asked me earlier? Does that make sense? No, I just said to you, I didn't know she was missing. At the time, I didn't know she was missing. No, no, but I mean, I'm telling you now, from a police perspective, as we move forward, we know she's missing. I've told you why, in that there's been no activity on her bank account. Nobody has heard from her. She hasn't phoned anybody. She hasn't reached out to contact anybody. Her car has not moved. It was, like, in her driveway. She was there. Um... The family hasn't heard from her. She hasn't made withdrawals on her bank. She hasn't shown up for work. Mm -hmm. um, that's like somebody just dropped off the face of the earth. And we all know people don't do that. Yeah. We are creatures of habit. We have our routines, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you say to me, how do we know some of these things, and, and how can I draw the conclusion that I believe you know something bad has happened to her, I want you to look at that picture. Okay. Now, first of all, let's start with this one. Where is that? That's her driveway. Exactly. Okay. And whose car is that? That's her car. Right. That's a new one. Pretty new. Yeah, it looks fairly new. Right. But here's the thing. So you when know I she paid about forty three thousand for that. Forty three thousand for that car. Yeah. It's got all the bells and whistles. Is that the one you drove to Quebec? Oh no, 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 no. 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 That's but a nice she car. Had a, she had an old Camry, yeah. but it was in really good shape. That's a nice car. But she had a nice one with the Camry. Was a rail. Oh, okay. So she got this one. Well, that is a nice car, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. So one of the things I want you to notice there, and I'm just telling you things that, that I know from my observations now as we're investigating this, right? See that right there? Yeah. That's blood. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, we'll start there, okay? But this is her house. This is her entrance, mm -hmm. right? It looks familiar to you, right? Because you've been there before. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, This is the back of her car. Yeah. Because yeah. see this little piece yeah. here? Yeah. That would be along here or uh, down no, the side. Right. See that? Yeah. What's yeah. that? That's blood. That's blood. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm and, assuming. Yeah. So am I. Right? Yeah. But from my standpoint, between that at the front of the car and this at the back of the car, that's it. That's what I would refer to as a significant amount of blood. Full play. Yeah, foul play. Indicated foul play. Absolutely, yeah. right? Because that's not a cut finger. No, no. That's no. not a stub toe. No. That's significant, no. okay? There's a lot of things I can read into when I look at that, okay? So when I see those things. Then you look at that picture. So you obviously know that that picture is along here now, right? Which one? See this picture here? Right? That, that, this Where is that in relation to this? This picture here is there. Exactly. Okay. See her keys? See an earring? I'll take your word for it. I, yeah. I, you know, okay. And, 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 I took my glasses away from me. Okay, well, right here is her car key, her house key, and right here is an earring. Yeah. Okay. And there's a sign of a struggle. You can see how everything's kind of tossed up, and there's the edging of the blood right there, right? Yeah. Now, that's not normal. We know she didn't go in the house. We know her things are lying there, okay? Um, there's another picture which is along the edge here. Yeah. That's her glasses laying on the ground. It indicates a sign of a struggle. Oh, yeah. It tells us that there was a struggle there. Yeah. Okay. And we've got the blood. Did you see that her glasses are here? Right there. That's her glasses. That's her glasses right there. Okay. So that indicates to me a sign of a struggle. Yeah. Um, plus we've got the bleeding at the front of the car, we've got the bleeding at the back of the car. Yeah. And it's it's right at the entrance where she would be getting into her door. Yeah. How do I know that um, this day is the day she went missing? The 12th of November, which is a Wednesday, she was working. And she was working at Walmart. Yeah. So we've already verified that she worked her shift that day. Mm -hmm. And we verified what time she ended her shift and went home. So we know that she was alive all day. People spoke to her. People saw her. Mm -hmm. People interacted with her. And people watched her leave work. Okay? So we know she left. And we presume, because her car is in the driveway, she eventually went home. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how we know this day. Because on the next day, the 13th, 
she didn't show up for work, number one, which is unusual for her. Right? She didn't go to work on the 13th. So that caused people some concerns. Um, family members didn't hear from her. Nobody could locate her. And this is what people found when they went to her house. Mm -hmm. So when you put, she goes to work, she leaves work, she heads home. People see this, police arrive and see this. We have evidence of blood. She doesn't go to work the next day. And from this day forward, she's never been seen or heard from again. So we can conclusively say that sometime during the evening hours of the 12th or into the early morning hours of the 13th, yeah, yeah something happened to her, uh -huh. and that's when she went missing. So that's how we know for that part of it. Make sense? You understand, like, investigatively-wise how we're looking at it, right? So some of the things we're looking at is this. I know that there was a struggle here. I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, The blood tells me that. The glasses, uh -huh. the keys, and the earring tell me there's a struggle there. This is one of the things that we're now doing, and it started today. Do you remember when 9-11 happened in the United States? Uh -huh. The Twin Towers got uh -huh. the terrorists. Mm -hmm. okay? Ever since that day, um, the United States Department of Homeland Security, NASA, um, the American military, invested billions of dollars into satellite imagery. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason they did that was to try and prevent the attack of you know, terrorist activities in the future. Because one of the questions they had was, how could we not see this coming? How could we not see a rogue plane coming? How, you know, all these different things. As in anything, a lot of things that we do in the world are reactive to tragedies. So they enhanced billions of dollars into satellite imagery. And so what these satellites do now they're orbiting 24-7, and they're snapping pictures mm -hmm. all the time. We have realized that law enforcement, police, only certain agencies have access to it. We can access those satellite imageries by contacting the Department of Homeland Security in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have to have what we call a criteria offense. So it has to be serious. Treason, homicides, mm -hmm. or attempt homicides. They won't look at it for anything else. Okay. We also have to be very specific and give them either an address, and if we have an address, obviously we can give them latitude and longitudinal coordinates. Mm -hmm. You're a smart mm -hmm. man. You understand mm -hmm. what latitude and longitude is? Okay. You know MNR was using that years ago. Absolutely, right? So that's why you would know about it. Uh, to measure trees and forests and... Um, the makeup of the forest and the age of the trees and, and the even, health of the trees. Even and today yeah. with GPS and, <coughs> and, and, and plotting <coughs> and GPS coordinates, GPS coordinates still go right to latitude and longitudinal coordinates because in even in aviation, right, they still have to be able to fly over and find that spot on the earth because latitude mm -hmm. and longitude stays consistent the world over. That spot will always be there, right? Mm -hmm started today the request has gone into the department of homeland security mm -hmm. okay we provided them an address and we provided them with the latitude and the longitudinal coordinates for her house mm -hmm. we know a struggle happened here on this driveway mm -hmm. something happened mm -hmm. okay when we put the request in what happens now is they punch those coordinates into the database access the satellite that was over the earth at that point in mm -hmm. time and download the images okay mm -hmm. They download the images. Images are forwarded to us. We know when she left work. So now we have kind of a starting point to say, I don't need to see everything on the 12th. I just need to see from, say, 7 o'clock in the evening on. So give me from 7 o'clock in the evening all the way into the 13th the next day. Right? Mm -hmm. I know in that time frame, I will capture this struggle on the driveway. Okay? The request has gone in. It's going to take time for me to get those pictures back because it's a massive database and the request has gone into the Department of Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. They will download the images, they will send them to us. And when that happens, I will then have an opportunity to have an investigator sit and go through the images. Mm -hmm. These images that come in are phenomenal because they're military grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're, it's, it's based on NASA premises. And so, like I've had success in other cases 
where I've been able to focus down in on the make and model of a car. Mm -hmm. it, the quality is that yeah. good, okay? That's one thing that's happening mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. okay? The other thing that's happening right now since we're here is I've been to her house. Mm -hmm. I know where it's located, okay? And one of the things I know is that when I go to her house... These are good pictures, by the way. They're not bad, eh? They're yeah, very good. They're very good. The quality of pictures that are going to come in off that satellite will make those look like child's play. <laughs> it's incredible what you're going to get. It's incredible what we can see. So you think I could ask you for another cigarette? Yeah, absolutely. I'll get you another cigarette. There's a street view of where she lives. Okay? Where Where's her house on there? I wish they hadn't taken my glasses. I can assist you if you can't see. Anyway. Her house would be is round about where this green thing is. What road does she live on? Bennisport? Bennisport. Exactly. Yeah. There's Bennisport right there. This is a river road or river road in Bennisport Road. That's a very bad corner, by the way. I know, I was there. It doesn't very look like a good corner. corner. Thank you. So here's the thing. I went to her house. I stood in her driveway. I looked around. What do you think I saw? No idea. Big cemetery over here. Oh, yeah. Highland Park. Massive. Yeah. Big gates. Yeah. We like, used to beautiful. Go, we used to go walking there. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful spot. Right over here, a couple of doors down from her house, is a daycare being run out of the house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right over here is a big school, just down the street. First, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just down from the school, before you get back to the intersection, is a, a variety store, a convenience mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. What do all of those things have in today's day and age? Cameras. Yeah. They all have cameras. It's the world we live in. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has cameras now for security reasons. Insurance, protect their own property, um, trying to prevent vandalism. Schools, new legislation was passed uh, because of a couple of tragic incidents that happened where they installed cameras at all the schools that focus out on the streets and the crosswalks so that when kids are walking, in case there's an accident, in case there's an abduction, we want to be able to see vehicles, we want to be able to see people walking. Um, variety stores have cameras you know, shooting out onto the street in the parking lots in case people grab things out of the store, shoplifting mm -hmm. and run away. People arriving at the store for robberies, break and enter thefts. This um, cemetery, uh, the whole the whole laneway is 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 cameraed mm -hmm. to capture vehicles coming in and out. Anybody that wants to do damage, they have a beautiful big building in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's all yeah. cameraed, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. the world we live in. This daycare, oh my word, cameras, because they're they're caring for children. Yeah. So, you know, for insurance reasons, they have cameras there to in case, you know, abduction, some parent shows up that's not supposed to show up, a child wanders off, at least you got something to start with, right? Mm -hmm. I have officers at every one of these locations, as you and I speak, accessing and downloading all the data mm -hmm. for the 12th of November into the 13th of November, because she lives right on that corner. Mm -hmm. So now we're accessing all those cameras. We're accessing everything. Okay. Now, when I look at those cameras, when I look at the satellite imagery that's coming in, okay, and, and I, that's why I want to ask you this question. So on the evening of the 12th of November, so we're getting into the nighttime after 7 o'clock at night, maybe even into the early morning hours of the 13th, but we're talking about that Wednesday night into the next day when she went missing. Is there any reason you can think of why, when I download these images from all this video footage and have a look at it, or when my satellite images come and arrive, okay, is there any reason you can think of why I'm going to see you or your vehicle in that area? And I just wanted to ask you that now, because maybe there's some logical reason that you were there or in that area that I'm not aware of that we should talk about and clear up now so that I don't have to come back and do it later. Uh, Any reason you can think of why no, I'm going to see you or no. your vehicle? <clears throat> no. No? Okay. And, and it's, it's, that's why I thought I'd ask now, right? Mm. Because this is just a matter of probably hours away. Yeah. Right? Um, well, 
According to you, if, if you've got a maid. What's that? According to you, you've got a maid. Well, uh, it's just a question of time. Yeah, it is a question of time, right? So, but that's why I wanted to ask you if there's any reason you no, can think of. No, I've got of. nothing to say. <coughs> that lawyer's going to be mad at me. No, but I'm just wondering <coughs> for talking to you. Is there any reason you can think of why we would even see you there? I don't know what to answer any questions at all. Okay. all right. But I just wanted you to understand that's one of the things we're working on. Okay, so I wanted yeah, to give you well, some info. I wanted to share it with you. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Because it looks as if you're definitely going to have this brought up pretty soon. The other thing that we're working on, because you asked about your car, okay, you have a Subaru. What yeah. year is your car? 2010. 2010. I bought a brand new. Yeah. Paid cash for it. Yeah. No, it's a nice car. It's in good shape. The fuel consumption is terrible. Is it? It's just awful. Okay. Which I suppose makes sense. If a motor's got to drive four wheels, it's going to use more gas yeah. than a motor that just has to drive two wheels. Yeah. Okay. Are you aware, and I'm sure you are, because you're very, very well read. You're a smart guy. Planes that go down, planes that go missing, right? I mean, remember that Air India jet? That went down, yeah. and I don't think they've ever still recovered all the, or recovered the wreckage. Remember that one? Just past this past summer, I think it was. There was one went down over Lockerbie in the 1980s. That they haven't got that big a deal yet. That's the RCMP that's working on that. Yeah. But whenever a plane crashes and goes down, what is the one thing that they that they want to recover first the and foremost? The black box. Exactly. Why do they want the black box? Because it records the activity of the plane when it went down. Exactly. Were you aware that cars also have their version of a black box installed in the computer modules? No, I didn't know that. Okay. They do. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, in serious cases like this, when we seize a car forensically, Okay, and we have to f go through it forensically. So, you know, we're looking for, for blood and fibers and hair. But when we suspect or believe that a vehicle has been utilized, one of the things that we do is uh, we do a forensic examination on the black box, the computer module that's installed in the car, that retrieves and holds data as to where that car's been. It's like a built-in GPS. Oh, yeah. Okay. It provides us with speed, uh, braking, acceleration, um, stops, starts, but it also provides us with coordinates. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's built right into the car. Dealers can access it. Us, through our investigative tools now, we can access the data as well. Okay. Um, so that's one of the other things that's happening with your car right now. Yeah. Okay. But that was not on the search warrant. What's that? That was not mentioned in the search warrant. I know that. I know that. I'm, I'm so that may be considered to be fruit of the poison tree. It's possible, but I still have to look at it because it's a murder. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's possible. Absolutely. Anyway. But is there any reason you can think of no matter. when we download that no, data? No, I think it, no answers for you at all. Okay, but that's why I just I have to ask the questions, yeah, right? Yeah. Is there any reason you can think of why that data no, is going to no show your card? Any questions? Okay. okay. Well, then I just want you to understand what we're working on. Yeah. And what we're doing. Okay. So you're aware of, of, mm -hmm. of what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, because I, I think it's important for you to know. Yeah. I think it's important for you to understand what we're working on as investigators. Uh -huh. I think you have every right to know that. You're the one sitting here under arrest. Mm -hmm. Make sense? I still don't know why they don't just let me go home and stay at home where I would be comfortable. Because I'm not, certainly not going to be going anywhere or doing anything.
you recognize that? Yeah, that's my car. That's your car. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's your carport? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is? What was that a picture of? Looks like and the exhaust kill plane. Yeah, and it's actually this one over here. Uh, I just want to show you. It's this one. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is a close-up uh -huh. of this exhaust mm -hmm. pipe. So the way that vehicle is facing right now, that would be the driver's side. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And you agree that's your car? Mm -hmm. That's your carport? Yep. Okay. So this is this blowing up. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It's blood. This is back here on your tailgate. It's a close-up, okay, on the tailgate. Yeah. Okay, that's blood. Mm -hmm. This, it's kind of dark, but it's what we call the pillars. Yeah. So this is the driver door, passenger door on yeah. the passenger yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. There's blood there. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done is... That's blood, that's blood, and that's blood uh -huh. on your car. Mm -hmm. Whose blood do you think that is? No idea. When I told the police right at the beginning, yeah. right on the day they took me away on Thursday, I told them if they wanted blood, I would give them blood. Yeah, absolutely. And they could compare it to, to this blood. Is there any, like, is it logical? Would that be your blood? Have you cut yourself? Yeah, I cut, I cut myself here. Yeah. Okay, and how'd you do that? I did it with a chisel. A chisel? Yeah. Okay, what... Um, and I explained all this to Dan LeMay. Okay. I even showed him what I was working on when it happened. and showed him how it happened and everything else. He actually helped me. Did he? Okay. Now, after you cut your hand, did you touch your car? I must have. Okay. No, and that's why I'm asking, right? Um, because I mean that, yeah, that would bleed pretty good. And you're, um, you're, you're right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. So it would make sense that you would open doors with your right hand, things like that. I, right? I, I can only assume that this blood go on the car. But I'm that would make that, that would make sense, know. right? It's the only thing I can think of. Is there any reason you could think of why that would be? I don't know. Her blood. I Jesus' blood. I have no idea. It's her blood. Oh, it's her blood. It is. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks to me like you get everything wrapped up. You're a very logical man. You're a very smart man. I'm not a very smart man at all. You I'm are quite sure you tested my intelligence. It would be, at best, it would be average. Well, what I mean by that is this. You are a very logical person, and so I don't want to sit here, sorry, and, and play any type of games with you. Uh -huh. I want you to understand why you're here, because mm -hmm. I think you deserve to be treated with respect and courtesy, yeah. just the same way you've treated me here today, yeah. which I appreciate. I'm telling you right now that that's her blood on your car, uh -huh. okay? But I'm also prepared to back it up because you're such a smart man. That's the report from the Center of Forensic Sciences that you may have a look at and read, which is not my opinion. It is their opinion that they have done the scientific tests mm -hmm. and they have verified the fact that it's her blood on your car. Mm -hmm. And you can read through that, take your time. Or I can read no, it to you. No, Would you like me to read it to you? I don't have my glasses. They Want me to get them for you? No, I don't need to be done. I'll take your word for okay. it. That's her blood on your car. Okay. Okay. So I just want you to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you haven't seen her since the Saturday before she went missing. That's right. So she hasn't been in your car because she hasn't been anywhere near your car. And yet her blood is on your car. How does that happen? I don't know. You do know. That's the thing. No idea. We're at a point right now where it, this isn't a 
what happened to her. This isn't a who done it. Okay, we know she's gone. Mm -hmm. I know you're responsible. But there's still some, you know, the big question is the, the why. That's the only answer we have left is the why did this happen? It's not did you do it? We know you did, okay? This is only one set of scientific testing mm -hmm. that's happened. There's more scientific testing going on as we speak, mm -hmm. plus all the pictures, plus all the images. Mm -hmm. You can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. This is all coming to one great big mass of head, okay? Mm -hmm. You are a smart man. You know, okay? Tell me something. Yes. Did you execute a search warrant on Ben Kalman's house or car? Myself, I haven't. I just got here today. Sorry? I said, I just got here today, so no, I haven't. Well, did the Peterborough police execute a search warrant on Ben Kalman's house or car? No, not yet. Did they execute a search warrant on Dave Clark's house or car? What does that have to do with anything at this point? Because those investigations are ongoing and those people are certainly being looked at. However, the evidence takes me where I need to be and I have her blood all over your car. Mm -hmm. I have a lady that's missing that hasn't been seen since the 12th. I have a sign of a struggle in her driveway where there's blood on her driveway and obvious signs of a struggle. There's blood at your house. Blood at my house? Right. Well, there'll be blood all over my house. Right. Because I'm always bleeding. Right. Um, but... But it'll be my blood. Okay. It's sure as hell is not Lizzie's blood in okay. my house. But it's on your car. Well, I don't know about that. That's science. It's right there. It's on your car. Okay. And you know what? Even even down to it's on your exhaust. Low. Okay. Here's the thing. We're we're at this point where you know exactly what happened to her. Now the way I have to look at it is and, and I do look at it like this. Do I think for one moment that you planned all this? Absolutely not. Do I think for one moment that you woke up one day and said that I'm going to harm her and take her life? No, I don't think that at all, okay? But I, the fact is it I, did happen. I love her. I know you do. So help us bring her back. Because there's family... If you're, if you're convinced she's dead, you're not going to bring her back. No, but you know what? You know as well as I do, there's grandkids and a daughter. And, and a son, son that would like her and, remains. And, and the brother. Don't that would like her brother. remains. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And I know you love her. It looks to me like you've got this all wrapped up. But I want her. Oh. I want her back. People deserve can, that, and I you know cannot, that. I cannot answer any more questions at all. But you can. You absolutely can, because you can make up your own I mind. I know that the lawyer told me not even to speak to you, but I... Being a, the kind of guy I am, I don't mind speaking to you. You've been a gentleman. But, You've uh, been respectful. You've been cooperative. You're just telling me that you can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I killed Lee Fredette. This is what you're telling me. Right? I'm telling you that these, so this evidence no, supports the allegations. There's no point in us talking any more about this. Well, there's, there's actually... As far as I could see, you've got this whole thing wrapped up. But you already knew that coming in here. You already knew that you're the person who's responsible. I didn't need to tell you that. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, this, you can't argue with the science that the blood is there. It's, you want to know what the numbers are? The numbers are 1 in 26 trillion that it's anybody else's but hers. Okay, a quadrillion, I should say. The I thing is, I would dispute that. That you'll, you will have an opportunity to mm -hmm, dispute that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But how are you going to dispute it? I am not qualified. Sir? I am not qualified to do blood analysis or anything like that. And nor am I, and that's why the scientists will come in, because it's not my opinion. It's the scientists that will come in 
and say this is what they do for a living. And then there's the, all the images that are coming, all the cameras that are being downloaded. Mm -hmm. You got a name. But what are you going to say then? You're going to look at the community, you're going to look at the family, you're going to look at everybody, and then what are you going to say? I'm going to say I didn't do this. So, and, and everybody's going to look at a, an image, everybody's going to hear about the DNA, everybody's going to read the results, yeah. and you're still going to stand there and say, I didn't do it? I don't know what I'm going to say until I speak to a lawyer. The thing is, you're a grown man, you can speak for yourself, Number one, okay. I know you love her. Period. That well, that is not a doubt in my mind. I know you love her. Well, if you're quite sure she's dead, then it's a past tense. You know she's dead. You know she's gone. You, you and I don't need to play a word game back and forth. I'm not playing. I'm just telling you I don't want to speak to you. That's all. Because the lawyer told me not to speak to you. And 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 I'm telling you I don't have an issue with that. However. I'm simply reminding you that you can speak for yourself. You've you've made that quite clear here today that you're very capable of talking. You're a very eloquent, very intelligent man. And you can also speak for yourself. You can also realize that the situation that you find yourself in, where you're at now, is you're at the point of no return. You've been arrested for murder. I've shared with you some of the evidence. There's a lot more that's still going on. Yeah. Okay. None of this is so I don't know why you would even bother talking to me. Because I would like her body back. That's why. You know that. That's logical. Okay? That's logical. Because you know what? And it's not for me because I don't have a personal attachment to her. But you know what? There's her daughter. Mm -hmm. There's know. all her family. Okay? I know. I know. And, and you know what? Does somebody else need to eventually find those remains? Does a child need to stumble across them? Mm. Whatever the situation may be. Um, I would like her body back. Mm. And that's where we're at. As far as the murder goes and the who did it, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. The why is the question that everybody has. And from a family perspective and a community perspective, they would like to see some dignity come to... Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether she she had personality flaws and she wasn't always the nicest person in the world to you, and she maybe didn't always treat you a hundred percent fairly. Oh, no, make no, no mistake. No, no, we had no problems. No, but I mean, you talked about the fact that she had a temper, and with that would come violence. Lots of people have a temper. Absolutely, I agree. And I look at this case. I don't believe for one moment that you planned all this. I actually and think. And just in case, I don't want you to have the wrong idea. I'm not trying to tell you that she was some kind of ogre. She was not. Oh, I, I never took that. She was a that. wonderful person. And 99% of the time we go on just perfectly. I agree. And we so all have she's not an ogre in any way, shape or form. Okay. So she blew a top occasionally. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. So then she deserves better than where she is right now. Uh, you know that and I know that. Okay. She deserves better than where she is right now. And let's bring her home. Do you think you would be able to give me a mattress and a pillow or something for that, that cell? Yeah, I mentioned that to you earlier, that yes. When I spoke to you earlier at the cells, I indicated to you that when you go back in there, yeah, I'll get you looked after. It's awful uncomfortable the way it is. Yeah. But you don't think there's any chance of me going home and staying at home? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's bring her home. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice talking to you. And no doubt you'll be willing to talk to me again. We're not done right now. Oh, well, we're not done right now. No. Well, I just told you I don't want to answer any more questions. That's all. That's fine. You can listen. I'm allowed to talk. I'm not sure. Right? Sure. But the thing is, you need to understand the big picture of where everybody's coming from now. Well, you've explained it very well. Right. The whole thing's wrapped up. Well, except for the fact that do you think that the lady that you loved 
like really her family, everybody that's a nice person that you spoke of, they would like to see her back. In whatever form she's in, they would like to see her back. You know that. Okay, and I think that's fair request on their part. You know that and I know that. Okay? I, I, I don't think I'm sitting here with a bad guy. I don't think I'm sitting here with any type of a monster. I actually think Have I'm, you checked my, my record? Yeah, you don't have one. You don't have one. You loved this lady. I think as you sit here, you still love her, even though it's in the past tense. You're not a violent fellow. You're not a violent person. You're actually a very peaceful person. Um, that I know, okay? This was not planned. This was not premeditated. This was not all mapped out to the nth degree, okay? Well, why but the is fact it, is, it happened. Why is it first degree murder if it wasn't planned? Why is it first degree murder if it, it wasn't planned? The charge, right. first degree murder. If it wasn't planned, why would it be first degree murder? Um, because right now, since we don't have her remains back yet, there's evidence that could be on the remains that would constitute a first degree murder charge. Oh. Um, the other thing is, in the court systems, they can always lower the levels of homicide. It's hard to go back up. Oh. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's first degree murder. Okay. But like, none of this is surprising you. I know that. You know that. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm being very candid with you. There's no surprises here. This isn't a who did it. The questions are why. I don't I don't believe, like I said, I don't believe you're a monster. I don't believe you're some type of evil. Okay? I think it happened. I think it happened fast. It may even have been an accident. And then but when accidents happen, people can panic. And people when can accidents happen, people what? Can panic. Oh. And react in such a fashion where they make decisions, right? Um that's quite possibly what we have here. Maybe she was the aggressor. Maybe you were defending yourself. But the fact is, she ended up in the state she's in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I've been candid with you with what we have, what we've been working on thus far. There's mm -hmm. more coming. Um, I think you deserve that. You're the one facing the allegations. You wanted to know why you were here, so I told you why you're here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's fair. You need to hear that. Mm -hmm. I, I have no problem telling you that. Okay, But the one thing I do know is that none of that comes as a surprise to you. You're well aware of why you're here. Okay, It's human nature. I get it. It's human nature to, to understand and realize I'm facing murder charges. Um, why would I want to talk about it? I get it. But the fact is, the evidence is speaking for you. The evidence is there. Yeah. Right? I had no problem speaking to the police on that day when they were thirsty. Yeah. They were there from lunch to about one o'clock, so 6.30 or something. And I answered all their questions, spoke to them about it. There's a, there's a witness who sees you driving away that night. You're not at home all night. Oh, well, there you are. You've got it made. Okay. Plus the blood on the car. Plus your GPS, plus all these cameras all over the place. Right. I don't know why you're even wasting your time talking to me. Oh, it's never a waste of time to talk to you. Oh, wow. It's never a waste of time. Okay. See, because you have an opportunity right now to tell me your side of what happened. It's tragic. It happened. It cannot be reversed, and we know that. We all make mistakes in life. We've all done things that we regret. You're in a position where, like I said, you now have an opportunity to say, Scott, this is, this is what happened. If you have remorse, if you feel bad, if you feel guilty. Yeah. You have an opportunity. Yeah, but the lawyer told me not to speak to you. 
And that is fair, but you can also speak to yourself. Yeah, but why would I have a lawyer to advise me and then ignore what he advises? That would be kind of stupid, wouldn't it? No, I, I can't comment on that at all because people can make up their own mind. You indicated earlier, what if the lawyer wasn't smart enough to do what you wanted him to do? Those were your words earlier. What if he didn't know to object? What if he didn't know what he was yeah, doing? Yeah. So you're a very smart man to know that you can also you speak for yourself. Maybe you came home and found her in the driveway because somebody else knocked her out and you panicked and you thought, I need to get rid of the remains. Whatever spin maybe, you want to put on it, it, let's go get her. A, maybe it was a home invasion. Maybe. But, but nobody ever did they use your car? No, I don't know. Did your car go missing? I don't know. Did you lend it to anybody? I don't that I know of, but somebody could have stolen it. Did anybody steal your car? I don't know. I'm sitting in the house all the time. I don't know what's going on. I do know my car's been ransacked in okay. the past. Has it? Okay. When was the last time it was ransacked? Oh, okay, it was a, quite a while ago. And, uh... They took, I have a, I keep a spare pack of cigarettes in a glove box, they took the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And I had a little dish of coins that I keep for, uh, if you have to pay on the toll road, you have coins handy. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm parking somewhere and I need coins for a parking meter. And there was about 20, 25 dollars of coins in that. <laughs> and they took that. Yeah. But fortunately they didn't do any damage. That's good, yeah. Do you, do you think it's possible somebody took your car? I have no idea. I'm just asking. I you told think. you, I sit in the house reading it all the time. But we I have a witness that says... You okay, left okay. Good for you. You've got it all wrapped up. Why do you keep going on? Because I would like to bring... Lee's well, back bring, to her bring her back or whatever. Do whatever you like. Just don't involve me. The lawyer told me not to even talk to you. I should have been talking to you all this time. You you know that you're involved. So how can I step back and not involve you? You're you're a logical man. You know that. Okay. That's the one thing that you're conflicted with right now is the fact that you are so logical and and you are so. I'm not conflicted at all. Then I've underestimated the only you. Thing, the only thing that's bothering me is these conditions that I'm under. Do you understand you're under arrest for murder? I understand you that. Understand you understand these conditions? You're in a jail cell. Eh? You're in a jail cell. These are terrible conditions, for God's sake. For somebody who supposedly is innocent, has not been convicted of any crime. That's right. To have to put up with these conditions is just abominable. But the police don't care. They're not living in these conditions. Well, how, how is it that they don't care? Obviously, if they cared, the conditions would be better than they are. What would you like in the cell? What would be better for you? Uh, <laughs> forget it. Just forget it, okay? I just think that the conditions are very, very bad here, that's all. Different if I was convicted, then the conditions, I don't deserve good conditions. But I'm not convicted of any crime. I don't feel that somebody who's been convicted deserves deplorable or bad conditions. We still have a right to provide people with living conditions even in custody well but we could banter on that all day i didn't build the building no no i have no, nothing no, to do I with know, it i know that okay, okay. but the this fact is, is the thing the nobody's ever responsible there's so many that they get everything gets scattered all around and nobody's responsible nobody can tell you this nobody can answer your questions or anything else well then let's talk about you know, responsibility, who's responsible for this? I'm talking to you. Can you not understand that? I don't want to talk to you anymore. Period. End of discussion. What could be simpler?
I believe you're afraid right now. And afraid? I, yeah. What am I afraid of? The future? Jail? That's normal. I would be too. That's normal for anybody. I think, like, my goodness, if I was sitting where you were, that is exactly how I would feel. Period. That's human nature. Like, I get it. Like, I'm not, I'm not obtuse to that. Like, that's normal. That makes sense. You know, lives change. Futures change. Everything changes. I, I get that. So I can say honestly that if I was in the same situation, you're darn right I would be afraid. You're darn right I would be concerned. I know that. that that's, you know, I may try and put on a show or I may try and act like I'm okay. I know deep down I'd be scared to death. Absolutely. Okay? I get it. The The premise of all this right now is your future changes from this point forward, and you know that. Oh, yeah. I, and I know that, too. I'm, I'm not pretending this is something that is not, okay? Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that you're cold. I don't believe you, you're this cold, laissez-faire individual. Not at all, okay? I, I don't. I think, you know, we refer to these. I, I've seen them time and time again. Did you love this lady? Yes. That's why you were watching her. That's why you were following her. That's why you knew her activities and her actions. I know that. The breakup, the fact that you two no, were no longer together, broke your heart. And I know that. Um, the, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult when we're dealing with matters of the heart and emotions. Um, it brings things out in us sometimes that we didn't even know we had in us, mm -hmm. that we've never felt before. None of us are immune from that. None of us, okay? I know you were following her. I know you were watching her. I've seen the letters that you wrote her. Um, and, and obviously you're paying attention to her because some of the things that you wrote in the letters, you obviously had to be watching what she was doing and who she was with. It hurts. You gave her everything of yourself in that relationship to her. You put yourself out there. You loved this lady. As you said yourself earlier, there isn't really anything you wouldn't do for her except for the Quebec trip that, you know, is the one time you pushed back even a little bit, saying you weren't comfortable doing something, okay? That's called unconditional love. That's called knowing that, that you know, I love this lady and there's nothing I wouldn't do for her. When she pushes back and doesn't want to be with you anymore, that hurts. That really hurts, especially when you, you didn't have an affair on her. You didn't hit her, you didn't beat her, you didn't do anything wrong to her. That makes it even worse. She, she didn't walk away from me, I walked away from her. Both occasions. But it was because of the way she carried on over, like you said, silly, trivial things that didn't make any sense. It's like she was pushing you away. I'm just correcting you. You said that she dumped me. She didn't dump me, I dumped her. Then I stand corrected. You dumped her. But the fact is, it doesn't take away the fact that you still loved her. And you were still watching her. And I know that. Okay? And that's, it's hard sometimes to let go. And it's hard to think that she's just moved on and with the appearance that maybe what you two had wasn't real, wasn't significant, the way she was perhaps carrying on with other people. Which hurts. Absolutely it hurts. Everybody in life has been through something like that at some point in time. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's for sure. But that's why I don't believe that you're this cold person, this, this callous individual. That's why I don't believe that. I don't believe that's you at all. Because you know what? Everybody describes you actually differently than that. Well, I don't know who told me I was cold. I don't think I'm a cold person. No, no, I didn't say that anybody said you were cold. It's it's where we're at here today in the sense that, you know what, I, I don't for one moment pretend that this is easy for you. I don't for one moment think that, you know, this is easy and that this is stress-free. This is one of the, probably the most stressful days in your life. This is not fun. I get it. You are under arrest, the allegations are murder, and I've sat here and presented to you evidence to show you. Mm -hmm. That's not fun. I know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and if I was sitting where you are, I understand that. It's like everything is mounting, everything is building, and it's wow. your jeopardy. Okay? 
I think if I let go enough, I don't know why you're even talking to me. But that's why you're under arrest, because there's more than enough. No, so when you asked earlier, I don't even know, Scott, why I'm under arrest, I don't know why I'm here, I answered your question for you, mm -hmm. because you deserve that. You deserve oh, to I know. know. I know why I'm here. Right. There's no question about that. I know okay. exactly why I'm here. I've been served with murder and... Uh, but I've shown you the why. Uh, we can't just go out and arbitrarily arrest people without grounds. We have to have grounds. Yeah. And grounds mm -hmm. mean we have evidence. Because for us to lay charges and bring it forward to a court, we can't just do it because, well, we think he did it, yeah. and let's see what happens. Yeah. There needs to be substance to that. Mm -hmm. Here's some of the substance. Mm -hmm. That's why I shared it with you. Okay. So like I said, you coming in here today, you sitting with me here today, is, is not the who did it. Okay. I'm explaining to you why we have that part all figured out. Mm -hmm. Here's the evidence. Mm -hmm. I followed the evidence. I'm sitting with the person that I need to be sitting with. I'm satisfied with that. Okay. The big question that people have, and it's two things, is the why. Okay, because everybody always wants to know why these things happen. Everybody always paints them out to be something big and sinister and planned out and evil. And it's my experience that more often than not, it's not that at all. Mm -hmm. It's something that starts off very innocent and then things go south in a hurry. Okay, and, and then people react to it. I get that. Do you by any chance have a business card you could give me? Yeah, when we're all done, I will absolutely give you a business yeah, card. Thank you. Okay. I would appreciate that. Because yeah. I speak to so many policemen over the last week, you know, dozens. Yeah, absolutely. No, no and, problem. And uh, all the names just... I'll make sure it's with your property. Okay. But other than the why did it happen, okay, the family is sitting in this building right now, and it's the where issue. Oh, they're in this building? They're in this building. Oh, wow. Okay, and it's the where issue. That's the only question they have. They don't. They don't care about the why. They don't care about the circumstances. Mm -hmm. They're not judging. Mm -hmm. They're not. Okay. They just want their mom back. They want their grandma back. Yeah, they're a nice family. They are. Yeah. And so I think they deserve and that. And I go on very well with them. And that's what they said too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I honestly believe they are a very nice family. Yeah. Okay. But they want mom back. They want grandma uh -huh. back. Okay. So let's go get her. You and I can I'm go get her. I'm not going anywhere except back to myself. Where hopefully I'll get a pillow and a mattress and maybe maybe even a blanket. Because that is an awful uncomfortable place. What I really would like is for you to let me go home. You know that's not going to happen. I already explained that and to you. I and can, I can guarantee you that I will not leave my house. I will not step over the door. That's out of my control. Okay. Like I said, that's up to the courts. We, uh, we put the person before the courts, and it's up yeah. to the courts to decide where the person goes. So will you be at this video thing tomorrow? Yeah. No? No. I thought you were in charge of this case. Yeah, but I don't need to be in uh, the video court portion because that's just uh, a hearing to remand you into custody. That's all it is. So tomorrow morning they'll decide whether I'm going to stay here or not. No, tomorrow morning will be probably a video to remand you into custody. And then you'll get a formal bail hearing, probably on Monday or Tuesday. Because okay, so it's a weekend, or Sunday. So I'll be here at least until Tuesday. No, I explained this to you earlier. You'll be here today, you'll be here tonight. My guess is, after tomorrow and the video remand, you'll be transferred to a jail. Ah. And then from the jail, they'll take you to the court. Ah. Okay. And the jail will be in Lindsay. Well, as we discussed earlier, I'll find out exactly which jail. But that would make sense, yeah. Okay, are we done here? No. 
Oh, could you at least get me my cigarettes? I feel very guilty smoking your cigarettes, especially since you don't smoke. You don't need to feel guilty about that. Could you not give me my cigarettes? Your cigarettes are lodged in property. I have cigarettes. I've given you cigarettes. So I, 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 you don't need to feel guilty about any of that. You don't need to I worry do. about it. But you don't have to. Okay? You don't have to feel guilty about smoking a cigarette. Okay? Do you have questions for me? No, no. I think you've got everything right to. So what are your thoughts on all that? Mm -hmm. I said, what are your thoughts on all that? I'm sitting here showing you how I, I believe you... I think you've been doing very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well. But I, I, I'm accusing you of taking her life. You're okay with that? Do I have any choice? Absolutely, you have a choice. You can say whatever you want to me. If you don't agree with it, if you don't like it, you absolutely have a choice. No, I don't have a choice. You charged me with murder. You charged me with murder, and that's it. But it's not without evidence. I'm not talking about evidence. I'm saying that I, the position I'm, I'm in, I have no choice. Well, I'm what? just a pawn here. You're just a pawn. The, yeah, that you're playing with. What do you mean by that? I told you I don't want to talk to you. How many times do I have to tell you that? I keep telling you over and over again I don't want to talk to you and answer your questions or anything else. But you know you can answer anything you want. You can say anything you want. You're a grown man. I'm not going to say anything I want. I'm not going to talk to you. I would like to go back to myself. And you will, absolutely. When? When we're done. No, when will we be done? Don't know yet. Are you going to stay here till midnight? I don't know yet. Did you give me my cigarettes out of that locker, and then I would need to smoke your cigarettes. And I already told you, you don't need to worry about smoking my cigarettes. It's not I an do, issue. I do. It's a big issue for me. But it doesn't have to be. I'm not a moocher. I didn't say you were. If I thought you were, I wouldn't give you a cigarette. <laughs> you think you're the only person I've ever dealt with that smokes? You kidding? You must have dealt with lots of people that smoke. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about people smoking cigarettes. I get it. Okay? Any guilt you feel about cigarettes is your own. It's not from me. Right? I think basically I'm a giver rather than a taker. So I don't like taking. It makes me feel guilty. I yeah, can't help it. That's I, the way I'm made. You find yourself in a situation, though, where you're going to have to take. Because... It's just the procedures and the policies that once we've locked up your property, we're not going to go into it. This is something that I can provide you with. I don't have an issue with it. So we don't need to worry about it. It's all good. Okay. Okay? A couple cigarettes is not going to, you know, break me financially. It's all good. Did you know an officer, a new PP officer called Pierce? Pierce? He was the officer in charge of the Helmuth Boxbaum murder down in uh, Kataro or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that case? I remember the case. I don't know if I know the officer that was a, in particular. That was a spectacular case. Was it? What, what did you like about or notice about that case? You obviously followed it and paid attention to it. I just read a book on it. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And what did you think? You said it was spectacular. What What is it that you picked up on? Oh, I, I didn't think it was spectacular. I just thought that this uh, officer Pierce did a good job. Yeah. What? But the 
to mistake the murder and maid was he involved far too many people and there were all low lives who would squeal on anybody to get out of it themselves, you know? Absolutely. So they were all spilling their guts and that's how the case was solved. That's an age-old um, issue that if you're going to tell a whole bunch of other people, well, then you've lost control of the information now, haven't you? Because you just... <laughs> This guy sure lost control, I'll tell you. You just never know who's going to go talk, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's uh, that doesn't even have to go towards crime. That's a society issue. If you don't want somebody to know a piece of information, then don't tell them. Yeah. Because you always run the risk that they could speak it. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly what happened. Right. Exactly. Right. So, that's common. That happens. Absolutely. If I had access to my house, I'd give you the book to read it. Maybe you don't read books, do you? I do. No. Yeah. I I can I appreciate the offer, but I can go get the book. That's yeah. I don't uh, see. I would feel guilty taking your book. It would be a gift. There you go. But I slayed it after a couple of the dance, to go to the dance, and they're originally from Hungary. Yeah. And I had a book on the Hungarian uprising back in the, I don't know, back in the 50s, 60s or something. And I asked them if they'd like to read it, and I gave them the book. To me, it's just spreading information or things that I think may interest somebody. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? It's an interesting read. It's uh, it's nice to be able to share that with people, right? I think that's a, I think that's a good idea to do those kind of things. I was very disappointed to learn that they don't have a library in the jail in Lindsay. I thought all jails would have a library. How do you know that? The guy in this thing told me. The guy in the cell opposite me told me. Oh, did he tell you that? Well, he, I think he's a criminal. No, but he said there's no... Oh, if he knows there's no library in there, then obviously he must have been in there before. Oh, he's been in, yeah, he's been in there. That's how he knows there's no library. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. No, but he says he could... That's me. Is that how she looked recently? Like, I haven't seen her before, so is that like a current picture? I would guess that's current. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've got lots of pictures of these. Do you? Yeah. No, I've never met her before. Yeah, and there's no reason why I would have. She lived a good life, and mm -hmm. it's not like she would have anything to do with law enforcement, so... We would, uh, it would make sense that we wouldn't cross paths, right? So I can only go by, you know, a couple pictures that I've seen, that type of thing, right? Where do you have your pictures of her? At home. I offered to talk to the police if they wanted them, but they didn't want them. No. <coughs> yeah, they had access to some other pictures, so. You miss her? That's a silly question. Believe it or not, I've sat with people that say, no, I don't. So I find I never take anything for granted anymore. I just ask the questions. Do you miss her? Mm-hmm. None of this was meant to happen, and I know that. Because that's not you. Okay. 
If I was asked to describe myself in one word, I would say quiet. Yeah. Would describe me yeah. perfectly. Yeah. But you know what? You can be quiet, and you can still have emotion, and you can still have a heart, and you can still love, and you can still care, and you can still have compassion, because you're the type of guy that shows it through your actions, not always through your words. So if you're willing to do the grass, if you're willing to do the flower beds, if you're willing to wash a car, if you're willing to get her car maintenance, then we, you know, if you're willing to do work around the house for her, if you're willing to color her hair, if you're willing to draw her a bath, if you're willing to make her a meal, right? If you're willing to go out of your way to sit and have coffee with her, and even though you didn't want to, you, you went to Quebec with this lady. Even though you didn't want to, you gave unto yourself. Okay? You did all this. In, in a nutshell, I did anything and everything that I could to try and make her happy. It's okay. as simple as that. So now let's finish this by making her family happy. Let's give them the one thing ah. that they need. Don't even think of it. These places are not made for comfort. It's the only thing they ask for. That's all they want. That's the only thing they want is her back. Wait, is this a cell phone? No, I told you at the beginning that's a voice recorder. Oh. Remember at the beginning I told you what it was? I thought it'd be... It is, I and that's a backup. So I want to make sure we don't miss anything because oh, okay, if you notice, okay. I don't write things down. No, that's okay. Yeah. Right? So that's a backup recording so that we always make sure if something breaks or malfunctions, we have a backup. Uh -huh. That's why I put it on the table. I don't hide it. Okay? Let's not dodge this. See? I said, let's not dodge this. this the the family not, wants her back. I'm not dodging anything. Then let's bring I'm her back. I'm just waiting for tomorrow to to get this video thing done. But we can bring her back so, today. So, so that I know what's happening to me. But we can bring her back today. So we know what's happening to her. Let's bring her back today. Oh, I don't know how many things I have to tell you. I don't want to speak to you. You know, what is that about that you can't understand? Well, I understand it. I don't want to speak to you. You speak to me, you just don't want to speak about this. Well, I don't want to speak to you at all. Oh, God, these places are uncomfortable. Did you drink your coffee? Yeah. I don't like this. Then why do you have it? You're, you're doing the same thing. No, it's just because I've been up for two days. <laughs> so if you don't like it, why do you have it? Well, when I was in the hotel for a week, they hadn't allowed me to take stuff with me because they told me I would be home the next day. So I just took my toothbrush and my toothpaste. So for that whole week, I couldn't shave. So when I got home to my house, I shaved, but I had so much growth, I had a hell of a time trying to shave. Because the ways I just keep getting clogged up and clogged up. So I quit. I, just, I did, did, did this and, and I left that. And I was going to get back to it again, but I never got the chance. I was arrested before I got back to it. Most of the time I spent in my house for that couple of days when I was home, I was trying to put the stuff back that, that they scattered all over the place. But I'm not nearly finished. It's just terrible. It'll take me forever, if I ever get out. It'll take me forever to put the stuff back here. Yeah. You understand this is a murder investigation, right? Of course. You think I'm dense? No, but I, you're sitting here laughing like it's well, laissez-faire. It well, it seems to me a silly thing to say. That's why I laughed at it. 
No, only have you told me that a dozen times that it's murder. I've got the papers out in that locker room that tells me I'm charged with murder. It doesn't no. bother you? So, it's beyond my control completely. I disagree. What is it? How is it going to bother me? There's nothing I can do about it. If there's something that's completely beyond your control, you might as well just forget it. But it's completely within your control. It's not within my control. Sure it is. That's been made very, very obvious to me too, that it's not within my control. The very fact that you're sitting here was as a result of your own actions. So it's always within your control. There's nobody else responsible for this. Well, there you go. So it's completely within your control. What's happening now is not within my control. What's happening now is completely out with my control. You can't even get my bloody cigarettes, for goodness sake. And yet you've been provided with cigarettes, so you've not it's, been deprived. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you've got everything there. You shouldn't care how it looks either. You've got this well wrapped up. So I do care. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. That's nice. And you don't? I don't want to talk to you. You don't care? I do not want to talk to you. Do you care about them? I do not want to talk to you.